Montanera, and now, after a lot of patience, they're starting to see some success. Moses has a lot to do with that. We flipped a coin before the game, and Pat got the access rental car keys to the game. Pat, what do you got for With us? With MTSU, it's confidence. They have to make some big plays early, gain some confidence, and realize that this is not going to be a nightmare again. For Vandy, ride that horse, Jay Cutler, that big stud. you got to let him go and make a bunch of big plays. So kick back and enjoy. This ought to be a fun evening. It's Vanderbilt and MTSU starting lineups and the opening kickoff coming up next on UPN 30. Longhorn Steakhouse, Purity Zero Plus Milk, and 96.3 Jack FM. Hi, I'm Albert Hainsworth, Pro Defensive Tackle. When I travel in the offseason, the only car rental company I use is Access Car Rental. They have every size vehicle with the lowest rate. If you need something large, they've got it. Minivans, Explorers, Expeditions, and Excursions, all with DVD players. They also have 12 and 15 passenger vans at great low rates. With 36 convenient locations across Tennessee, Access Car Rental has a location near you. Get access, call or visit the website to reserve your vehicle today. Need your contractor's license to get the best jobs? More and more, people are hiring only licensed contractors. Get your license now. American Contractors Exam Services is now offering their seminar here with their no pass, no pay guarantee. Commercial, residential, electrical, and mechanical trades, all exam areas are covered. Call now for information on the next class, the no pass, no pay seminar. 1-800-992-1910. 1-800-992-1910. When you feel the need for speed, it's go time. When you hunger for hard-hitting action, it's go time. When you thirst for the thrill, it's go time. They score! They score! It's go time. The Predators and San Jose Sharks, Wednesday, October 5th at 7. All fans receive a miniature Stanley Cup. 615-770-BUCK or NationalPredators.com. Brought to you by First Tennessee Bank. Frank Wycheck here at Rivergate Toyota. It's the $4,000 guaranteed trade-in this week only. Don't spend any more money repairing your old car. Come today to Rivergate Toyota and get $4,000 guaranteed trade-in on any used car in stock. The $4,000 guaranteed trade only at Rivergate Toyota. Push it in, pull it in, drag it in. Rivergate Toyota, your Toyota source. So come on in and see my good friends at Rivergate Toyota. We're back here in Nashville, Tennessee, a little less than a minute away from the opening kickoff between undefeated Vanderbilt and MTSU. As you can see, they've played 17 times, but for most of us, what we know about this rivalry is twice in the last five years. Andy McCullum and his Blue Raiders desperately won a victory tonight. His seventh year as the head coach in Murfreesboro, 0-3 this year, a disappointing start but Pat and I have seen this team down in Tuscaloosa. They weren't this bad. Bobby Johnson, on the other hand, in his fourth year at Vanderbilt, his first big taste of success with this team 11 years earlier at Furman to give him that 70 and 65 record. MTSU has won the toss. They have deferred until the second half. A late arriving crowd here at Vanderbilt Stadium for what ought to be a really good night of football. Without question, the backyard brawl. Both these schools bragging rights right up the street. They have passing camps in the summers. This is bragging rights right now. There weren't too many guys that played in the last meeting between these two teams in Bobby Johnson's first year, but every Vanderbilt fan is itching, and they remember the death blow to Woody Woodenhofer on that Thursday night game back in 2000. A very good Blue Raider team with Dewan Hicks and, and that crew. And then the following year, they beat him again. And so the Vanderbilt fans remember it, even though there are not that many players who participate. Kobe Smith will kick off for MTSU. Deep to receive for Vanderbilt. Kaysen Jackson Garrison, young man out of Knoxville, Tennessee, who's become a fan favorite. About set to go. And listen, we appreciate all of you being with us tonight around the mid-state area. This ought to be a fun evening of football. 
The kickoff return to about the 17, a late fumble that will be ruled dead. That is not a fumble, and it is downed at the 17, and that's where Vandy will start. Marcus Green tries to get it started right away with a strip. Steve Shaw, the official, making a very definitive decision on that play. And that one is not reviewable. Once the whistle blows, you cannot look at that on the replay. And that's similar to what it is in the college, uh, or so, sorry, in the NFL. But remember, there will be replay used in this game before it's over. Throughout the night, we'll talk a lot about this young man, Jay Cutler. 44 career touchdowns, more than 8,000 yards of total offense, and he has been their everything this season. First play is a pass, and he hits Marlon White for about seven. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight, brought to you by the Nashville Predators, and we'll begin with Vanderbilt offensively, a young offensive line, Holloway and Stamper, the two that are the most standout of those five. The skill people are led by Jay Cutler, Good tight end, 84 Dustin Dunning has done a nice job as kind of a possession receiver for Cutler. Start out with a little spot route right there. Cutler on second and three. This is Jennings, and depending on the mark, he'll be very close to the first down. Now let's look at MTSU's defense, again brought to you by the Nashville Predators. A front four that includes Jeff Littlejohn, who is a load inside. We spotlighted him in the open, weighs at least 318 pounds. The linebackers are the strength of these defense. All three can really run to the football. And the back four include Bradley Robinson, who already has three picks in the secondary. Vandy was able to move the chains, and they have a first down at their 28. Cutler swings it out, and Jackson Garrison tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Dennis Burke, one of those active linebackers, along with Bradley Robinson. Pat, we saw it in Tuscaloosa. They can play some defense. Yeah, they run around like, like banshees over there, but a great blitz pickup right there by the right tackle, Brian Stamper, as he sees the outside linebacker coming, shakes off the inside defensive end inside and picks up the linebacker and saves his quarterback a stroke. They'll actually call it a loss of a yard. So let's go with second and 11, about two minutes into the ball game on a beautiful night for football. Cutler, long sideline throw is a strike. Close to a first down is Nixon, but about a yard and a half short before Keon Raymond brought him down. Guys, you'll see when you watch Cutler, a guy that throws off his back foot, which supposedly isn't the right thing to do, but he's strong enough to get away with it. You really see some good arm strength there. Interesting receiver on the uh, recepting end of that thing. Chris Nixon, the backup quarterback in the game. Very good athlete, but if... Set, setting up the double pass, potentially. You've got all these little tricks in your mind, don't you? Oh, yes. This is the need for a long two. They go option to Earl Bennett, oh, hit behind play. the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive play on middle side. Jonathan Bonner, we, how much do we call his name out down in, in Tuscaloosa? Just a fierce tackler, and you watch him. He takes on the block. You'll see it right here. He takes on the block. They run the option. Watch Bonner. Sheds the block and makes the tackle for a loss. Excellent defensive play. An early little victory for middle's defense to open the game. Bryant Honfelt will kick for Vanderbilt. Bradley Robinson deep for middle. He'll stand at the Blue Raider 30. Honfelt, low line drive. Robinson on a tough catch. Goes down at the 34. Good open field work by Earl Bennett. We'll go to a break. We're about three and a half minutes in. Let the rivalry begin. We're scoreless. Got to do something about this fence. Guess I better go get the tiny lassos. 
It's not the same old West at Longhorn Steakhouse. Try our Flo's filet and lobster tail served with melted butter. Longhorn Steakhouse, there's a new West in town. Gas prices getting to you? Wouldn't you like to fill up for only eight bucks? It all depends on your ride. Pick a Kawasaki bike from America's Motorsports and you'll be cruising the highways and saving money on gas. Great combo. America's Motorsports and Kawasaki. So if expensive transportation is cramping your style, get a new style. Ride a Kawasaki motorcycle from America's Motorsports. Choose the ZZR600 Street Bike, the Vulcan 800 or 1600 Cruiser, or a Ninja 636. We have them all. America's Motorsports. America's Motorsports. Nashville and in Dixon. It's homecoming for the Blue Raiders as they host Louisiana Lafayette. Come out early for the homecoming parade at 11. Enjoy the Blue Raider experience with live music and activities for the kids. First 5,000 fans through the gate will receive the free Blue Raider sports bracelet. Come see what Blue can do for you. Tickets on sale now at one yes mtsu Have you decided? Sirloin steak fingers. Whoa, Nelly! Barry, you just ordered yourself a Shoney's value basket. What's your game plan? Well, I ordered the sirloin steak fingers, Keith. I'm gonna eat them. Sounds good. What about defense? Huh? You gotta be ready. This lineup brings five great All-American baskets to the table. I'm ready, Keith. I'm ready! From burgers to chicken fingers, these value baskets are ready to be gobbled up. All for just $5.99. Hurry, because just like football season, they'll go away fast. For great food at a great price, it's down, set, Shoney. <laughs> You see MTSU's offense coming out on the field for their first crack at it in this ball game. An offense that has struggled three straight great games, a total of seven points each. They've got to get more tonight. This is under the category of something has to give. MTSU has not scored in the first quarter all year. Vanderbilt has given up a score on the opposing team's first possession in each of the first four games. And Marks is checking right here. He runs option on first down. This is Eugene Gross, and he got clobbered at the 35. Vandy hit him with a couple of linebackers. Let's take a look at MTSU's offense and where they start. Brought to you by the Nashville Predators. An offensive line that has struggled in run blocking. They have averaged only 2.9 yards per carry. That'll have to get better tonight. Clint Marks is a very good quarterback. A year ago, more than 70% with his passing. Second and nine, they run a wingback reverse, and Henry brought down at the 38. Andrew Pace, the left corner, was able to make the tackle. Let's look at Vanderbilt's improving defense. Hurdley Harrison, one of the big players up front, a pair of sacks in the early going. As we mentioned in the open, Moses is the man at outside linebacker, and a back four that includes Andrew Pace, Vandy's number two tackler on the season. Third long, tough situation for the MTSU offense. Marks needs six out of the gun. Has plenty of time. This is Chicola, but he's wrapped up short by Jonathan Goff who made a good tackle in the open field. And that's one thing we talked about before the game even started. I said, MTSU, I think they need to try to get their tight end back into their offense. And that's a big load, that tight end, and a big tackle by Jonathan Goff. That's another key that we pinpointed, Pat, earlier in the, uh, in the pregame show. Yards after the catch. Vanderbilt will give you the underneath stuff all night long. Their key is to make the tackle and not give anything extra. Now look at this formation that Andy McCollum's got. Yeah, he does this very often so far in his punting formation just to try to see if they're playing honest. Colby Smith will kick to Earl Bennett. Bennett's going to let this one go, and it will go out of bounds inside the 15. Very effective kick for Colby Smith, officially 45 yards with no return. Right, and one of the things, if you're MTSU, you would have loved to have sustained some type of drive. The defense comes right back on the field. That's what we talked about before the game, too. One of the things that we were hoping, if you're MTSU, is you're hoping that you get that defense off the field and you get some drives going. If you're Vandy, hey, put number six right back out there. They can't play keep away. Both teams a little uptight early? I would think so. Well, middle has not played in two weeks, and so that's one thing to look at. And Vanderbilt knows how what about, is at stake. How about Cutler spread out right here? 
Nixon is for the moment the quarterback and you see Cutler at the bottom left of your screen. They run out of that and get about a yard. So the first little bit of trickery goes to Bobby Johnson. What's the idea behind all this? Probably just to give them something to think about. You know, those defensive coaches are sitting up there in the box. They got six out there. They got three at receiver. So, you know, give them something else to try to worry about up in the box. Chris Nixon is the heir apparent to Jay Cutler, a redshirt freshman from the state of Alabama, a tremendously successful high school quarterback. A lot of teams recruiting him, but not as a quarterback. Vanderbilt said, well, let you play QB, and thus he came to the Commodore land. And he split out again. Cutler split out again. The lead official in this crew is Steve Shaw, who is maybe the best the SEC has. Let's see what he has to say. Sideline warning, Middle Tennessee, that's their first warning. And that's not a surprise. Anybody that has watched Andy McCollum, he loves to get out on that field. He is into the game. You know what's going on? The get-back coach is going to be reprimanded. You all, <laughs> every team's got the get-back coach. You know, just walks up and down, get back, get back, get back. You don't have one of those in the arena, no, though, do you? No, get in the box. Get in the box. <laughs> so young Chris Nixon out of Brandage, Alabama, runs the option. This is not quite what the doctor had ordered going into this. He got about five. Their middle linebacker, J.K. Sab, brought him down. So how much of this do we think we're going to see? No, tonight? I think you'll see number six right back at quarterback right now. I, I, I'm not a big fan of trickery. You just, hey, if you think you're better than them, you line up and smash him in the mouth. Willie, let me tell you this. If at some point he stops talking <laughs> and you see him taking notes, <laughs> trust me, he's thinking ahead to January. <laughs> Vanderbilt needs about five. Cutler is officially the quarterback, and he fires a strike to Eric Davis, the local product, who gets nine and a first down on a ball that was right where it needed to be. And speaking of keeping an eye on talent, watch where this ball is released. This is a tough throw. He is throwing from the near hash mark almost, Pat off to the far side of the field. That is a difficult throw to make. And it's a great spot. Did you see her? He put it right on the outside, and his guy gets it, nobody gets it. Nice throw. Good those, delivery. Those of you who have not seen Cutler before, of all of the different things that make him good, he has a cannon for an arm, and he can throw that long sideline. This came off the option. He's got Marlon hey, White, hey. who dropped it. Oh, my gosh. That White, was big was wide open for what would have been close to 25. Hey, they'll come back to that before it's over. Oh, without question, and it was the action. Watch the action of the quarterback. Gets everybody nervous. Everybody's running over to that left side of the field. And actually, he has his pick your poison. You can go to Dunning or White. Yeah, Marlon White right here crossing the field on your screen. There's nobody near him showing a little rust from missing the last game. You can see the heavily taped right ankle. He sat out last week's game against Richmond. Part of that might have been just the excitement of seeing all that green in front of you. Five-man front is what middle shows. Cutler goes right back to White for a pickup of about six. Now, you might not think that's that big a deal but I like the fact that he kind of says, you know what, I'm going to get this guy back in the flow of it really quick. Yeah, and that's a confidence builder. That's a nice, easy route. It's just a simple hitch route. He turns and Cutler delivers. Hey, if you're not a Cutler fan, by the end of the night, you probably will be. And look for him to spread the ball around a lot. He likes to throw sometimes six or seven different receivers over the course of an evening. Cutler five of six in the early going, and the suspicion is number seven is about to happen. Plenty of time, and Jennings stepped on the sideline. The official was right there to spot it, and Bradley Robinson was in hot pursuit. So Middle's defense forces Vandy to punt again. Yeah, they bend a little bit right there, but and, and right now, if you're Bobby Johnson, you know you got some stuff that can work. You're getting some one-on-one -on -one matchups that you have to feel pretty confident about. That one, just a mental mistake by Jeff. Je uh, Jeff Jennings just not seeing the sideline. Unforced play right there, making it easy on middle. He was looking at the one-on-one -on -one defender he was going to have to beat to get to the chains and stepped on the sideline. Bryant Honfelt, and they go oh. after him, and it's a low-line drive. Middle definitely wanted the block on that one. Bradley Robinson in trouble, and he'll go down at the 34. Once middle showed that they were going punt block, 
you knew there wouldn't be a whole lot of a return. But remember, Middle's going to try that again before the night's over. Well, Middle has blocked 16 kicks since Andy McCollum took over. So you knew with the team that needs a spark, he's going to go after Vanderbilt's punter because that is one of the weak points of Vanderbilt's special teams, their punting release. Well, that's another thing that I, I think you're going to see a little bit of, of desperation tonight. Join George, Willie, and Darren weekday afternoons for the Sports Zone on 104.5 The Zone. We can't stop singing their phrases, The Simpsons. Weeknights at 9. Hank Hill, Peggy Hill, and Bobby Hill. Did anyone else sniff today's garbage? Star in King of the Hill. Weeknights at 9.30 on UPN 30. No matter who you are. No matter what you drive. There'll come a time when you need to stop. On a dime. Budget Breaks. Guaranteed lowest prices, or it's free. Budget Breaks. Call 1-800-866-BRAKE for a location near you. Budget Breaks. Breaks starting at just 68 bucks. I thought you were getting hors d'oeuvres. It's game time, baby. Come on now. That's a double quarter pounder. With cheese. Samantha wanted hors d'oeuvres. The double quarter pound of cheese. Pound one. Four dirhams. Yes. And this is what I had in mind when I thought about cheese. The BMW 5 Series with active steering. It handles so well, it's like riding on rails. Experience the pure joy of driving today. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Well, a little bit of a field position battle in the early going. We've played eight and a half minutes. Both teams have had their three and outs, and now middle will take over from its own 33. First down throw, and they swing it out, and the big fullback, McAfee, gets about five before Andrew Pace brings him down. Guys, let me ask you, Middle's defense has had two stops. That's got to increase their confidence a little. Yeah, I, I think it has so far. I mean, if you look, Vanderbilt's moved the ball a little bit, but, but they haven't been consistent enough in getting the first downs. Middle gives Vandy kind of a no-huddle look, and then a little bit like the University of Memphis, they'll all look over for a play call from the bench. And you see more and more teams kind of going to that style to keep defenses from being able to change. Gross is close, but from here about a half yard short. He's a guy that they need to have a big game tonight. For the season, Gross is just under 200 yards. They need him to have 100 plus tonight. We talked about it in the open balance. That play has to work. Just a simple off tackle or a G play has to work. Middle needs almost a yard. As you can see, Vandy's got about eight guys up in what's called the box area. Actually, nine. They uh -oh. tried to run option and gross. Did the smart thing to fall on the football. Absolutely. Yes, the play was not good, but a heady play there to keep away from a turnover. The play was gross, actually, <laughs> because gross had no chance. No, no chance whatsoever. And on top of that, I would have quick, quick snapped him and gone with the, the quarterback sneak. You got a half a yard to go. Just stuff it up in there. Somebody, I'm waiting for somebody to throw a punch. I mean, both these teams have, have right now have kind of jabbed. Well, Marks had a missed blocking assignment up front because there was a gold shirt that came right through, unblocked, and just blew up the play. Colby Smith again will kick to Earl Bennett. This is by far his best kick. Bennett from the 33. 
and that's about where he's going down. One yard return, and as Pat called it, the jabbing. It continues. Almost 10 minutes into the first quarter, we're still scoreless. Man, that's good milk. But what does zero plus mean? If you don't know, then just ask us about Pure D's new Zero Plus. It's fat-free milk, but tastes more yummy. The plus is healthy cultures that are good for your tummy. With great fresh taste. Mom? United together to save energy and money. A well-insulated attic is the key to cutting your energy bill. In the summer, the ceiling fan circulates the cool air and allows you to set your thermostat a little higher. Change the air filter of your central system monthly. Dirty filters decrease its efficiency. Installing a high-efficiency electric heat pump can save you big dollars, and your local electric power company can help you finance it. Middle Tennessee Electric and TVA, saving you money by using electricity efficiently. Southern Home Builders, traditional living with modern appeal. Greg has trouble getting up for breakfast, but today he's in for a treat. Because right now at Jack in the Box, he can try my new ciabatta breakfast sandwich. Lightly toasted ciabatta bread stacked with black forest ham, bacon, eggs, melting cheese, and hollandaise sauce. Welcome to Jack in the Box. Ah! Greg, put some jammies on. Vanderbilt Stadium here in Nashville, around 35,000 here for this big game between the Commodores and the Blue Raiders. After an exchange of punts, I feel like one of those old Notre Dame announcers. We move to further action. Cutler on a play fake on first down. Uh -oh. Looked for Dunning and threw that one into a crowd. Good defense by MTSU secondary led by Bradley Robinson. We go down to the field. We say hello to the fourth member of our crew by way of Lexington, Kentucky. Amy Fadul, welcome to Nashville. Thank you very much, George. And I'm standing here with one of MTSU's greats. Don Griffin, he played for four years down in Murfreesboro, and he also played for several years out of the 49ers, including two Super Bowls. Talk about that, Don. Uh, yes, uh, with, with the Niners, it was some great years. I got a chance to play with some uh, Hall of Fame guys, such as Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, you know, Jerry Rice, and those those years were just great. That, that's amazing. And you also did today, they did that Raider relay where they ran the game ball up here. You were part of that, so I guess you still got a little bit, huh? Uh, yes, that was pretty exciting. I had a lot of fun with it. And I, as I was running with the football, it kind of reminded me when I scored with the 49ers uh, in, in those years. How to remind you of that? Was it the, the crowd kind of getting up, or that you felt that open ground? Yes, I, 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 thought, I thought about those years. It kind of took me back, and I, and I didn't run too fast, but I just ran just fast enough for everybody to keep up with me. So. Did you get to talk to the football players and football team at all and tell them about your stuff? Uh, yes, a little bit, and I, I spoke with Andy and some of the coaches. They seem to uh, have, have a feel really good about this game, so I hope, hopefully it's an exciting game, and hopefully we'll win. It looks like way it's scoreless right now, but these two teams can put it up there. Thanks so much for joining us, Don. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, George, back to you. Amy, thank you. I did notice Pat Sperduto running out of the booth with one of those 10-day uh, contracts out of the Arena <laughs> League. He tried to sign the guy. Hey, Don could play. Now, that, that from he the was, old Boots Donnelly a, days? Oh, yeah, he was a good one. He was a good one. And a, a bunch of great players that have come out of him. Kelly Holcomb, Joe Campbell, I mean, they put out some great ones. And you'd sign any of them right now, I'd take you? them all right back. <laughs> you saw as we were uh, having the interview with Don that uh, they are short. Vandy is by an eyelash. So third and inches, if you will. Quarterback sneak. 
There you go, that's what you do. Sounds like a guy who's called some plays in his Absolutely. past. Absolutely. And Cutler does move the chains with that quarterback we, sneak. We used to have an automatic call. When you have when you have third and inches, you just call Comanche or whatever. He knows, just take it, find the crease, stuff your face up in there. It looked like the ball might have come out late. Did you see J.K. Sab come flying over there, the linebacker? I mean, he, he went airborne, he guessed, and he almost had Jay Cutler before he took yeah, off but, there. But that's what you're supposed to do. If you want if you want to punch that punch, so you got to keep punching him in the mouth. Stuff your face in there. That's that right. I had not heard that before on a quarterback sneak. Get you some. Cutler with a good play fake on first down and a strike to Bennett at the middle 39. That was a rope and a big gain on the play officially of, let me try that one, 16. And that's the seventh different receiver that Cutler has hit already in this first quarter. Earl Bennett has been a huge pickup for Bobby Johnson, a true freshman. He caught 11 balls last week with Marlon White out against Richmond, but he is a big playmaker. Yeah. Go back to the Wake Forest win. He made the big play on the final drive. His first ever catch was a 28-yard scamper after the catch to put him on the doorstep where they went in for the and, winning and score. Now, and now they go back to the cut and split out. He split nearest to your picture, and Chris Nixon is running at quarterback, and it's Jackson Garrison for about four to the 35. Pat, in all seriousness, what do you think that they're, what would be the message they're trying to send to middle through I, I this? I really think that they're trying to give middle more things to think about, but I, I, I'm a believer. You line it up and you tee them off. You just let them go, and that's really what it's got to come to. I mean, right now, I, I think middle will have a hard time. Cutler's proven. I mean, he took a vicious shot down here, came right back, makes the next throw. You see him throw the strikes. I mean, this guy here, he's he's big time. Or is it possible what they're really trying to do is give some SEC teams down the road something extra Absolutely. to think about? Absolutely, that's all part of it. Second and six, and a good solid hole and first down yardage for Jackson Garrison to the middle 25. We saw a little bit about a little bit of this down in Alabama. Like we said, watch the cutback. Cutback is key. Watch him here, Garrison. Jackson Garrison takes it. Cut back over, over pursue, and you work your way on the cutback lane. Great seal block that time by Josh Eames, the right guard coming across there to create that wall on the cutback. Jackson Garrison and Jeff Jennings, a very good tandem of sophomore running backs. They really like their power and their ability to make a guy miss and even break a tackle. This is the deepest that either team has penetrated so far. Vandy stays with the want run, and Jennings got maybe a yard and a half. Quentin Statham out of Chattanooga, big senior, weighs about 270. Yeah. He's part of a middle front seven defensive linemen and linebackers that can play. Yeah, and, and they try, you're trying to go in there. That's tough sledding with Jeff Littlejohn and Staten. I like Staten. You know, he's a former offensive guard last year, all Sun Belt Conference. They move mode over to defense this year, and he's proven that he can do it. When we saw middle three weeks ago in Tuscaloosa, they were very tough when Alabama started driving. A little bit of a three four right here. They showed blitz, came with a lot of folks, and Jink Jennings got caught behind the line at the 25. With all that blitzing, there were a lot of folks up in the middle there, and middle was able to make the tackle. How about that? They, they changed into a three four arrangement right there. They bring in two defensive ends to, who are really defensive tackles line them up bringing four linebackers right there not a stable of, of this mtsu defense jonathan bonner and marcus brandon two linebackers were just better than any vanderbilt blocker out there they just refused to be blocked and after jennings got through that first wave they were waiting for him and give credit again to little john taking up two or three blockers i'm telling you he's a load in there four wide receiver package cutler needs 10 on third down Fires, and that one was behind Marlon White. So middle, another small defensive victory there to keep Vandy out of the end zone. And Marlon White was open on that play, just a bad throw by Jay Cutler. Vanderbilt's been very effective on third and long, but on that one, they just missed time the break. The throw was there right as White was cutting to the inside. But you see what Cutler did? We got it on camera, too. He walks over to him, pats him on the butt, says, hey, Either my bad or your bad or, hey, you should have taken this a little bit deeper. I like that. That's a leader. Bryant Honfeld has helped Vanderbilt's kicking. Five of seven this year. Make it six out of eight. The first score is in black and gold. 
late first quarter and the Commodores have jumped out three zip and this is a big story for this Vanderbilt team Brian Honfeld who was playing down the road at Montgomery Bell Academy and he was you know he had to be aware for the last three or four years that Vanderbilt's had major problems in the kicking game and he basically came in and said I'm your guy and he's just made such a mental difference to this offense because Last year, when they would get in that area of the field, Pat, it was, we have to score a touchdown. Now, they know that they can kick the 40-plus yard field right. goal and not have to worry about it. He's, he's been consistent. He was consistent in high school. He was one of those kids that you knew would have a chance to kick at, at a major college, and he wanted to stay right here in town and deserves a lot of credit for that. Guys, talk to me about this. Middles offense has been the problem all year long. Seven points in each of the three games. They've started off slow tonight. What things can they do to help Clint Marks get their offense going? Well, I think they have to get their running game going. They have to almost force feed it. And then my other thinking is you've got to get down the field. You've got to, you've got to throw down the field in order to loosen up that defense, to get those linebackers falling out and trying to help out, and then that way you can punch them up the gut. And that'll be something to watch because it's the opposite of what Vanderbilt has allowed you to have defensively. They have usually backed off, and Marks is a very accurate passer, so I'm looking to see what happens in that area of the field on the sidelines with the six to eight yard hitches. This comes in the direction of St. Teal, and he gets out to about the 22. Don't forget at halftime, we will have the Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Show. A lot of stats, a lot of guests, a lot of football in Middle Tennessee. This is a game that has gotten an awful lot of pub on both sides. They're scheduled to play again next year after that. Up in the air, but I hope it continues yeah, to happen. I, I think they really, I, I honestly believe that Vandy should reciprocate and head down to Murfreesboro one time. 10 plays, 40 yards. The Vandy field goal drive, and now Middle will open with this young man, Clint Marks who is a fine quarterback as well. Let's we'll see if he can get their offense going. First down throw is right on the money. 14 yards and a first down on a rocket to Bobby Williams. And that's what I'm talking about. You have to get this Vanderbilt Commodore linebacker to back out of there and try to help in the passing game. Sugar huddle again. Middle's best offensive play of the night, and you saw a little bit of what Marks can bring to the table. This is not a one quarterback game by any stretch. This should be the final play of the quarter. Marks again to the air, and again a strike to Williams. 15 yards and a first down, so Middle back to back strikes to end the first quarter. 15 minutes of football in the books here in Nashville. 42-yard field goal is the difference. Vanderbilt leads by three. What makes Mack of Nashville U.S. Dealer of the Year? We offer new and used truck sales, service, parts, truck rental, and leasing. Mack of Nashville offers the full line of UD Nissan trucks to keep your business running. From big tractors to small vans, we have you covered. And for your mobile fleet service needs, call the pros. Our highly trained technicians will come to your location 24 hours a day, seven days a week with our fully equipped mobile service truck. Call Mac of Nashville and see why we are the U.S. Dealer of the Year. <sighs> you gotta do something about this fence. Guess I better go get the tiny lassos. It's not the same old West at Longhorn Steakhouse. Try our flows fillet and lobster tail served with melted butter. Longhorn Steakhouse, there's a new West in town. Stones River Motors in Murfreesboro is having a year-end clearance, so this is the best time to get that new Nissan Altima you've always wanted. Or the great new 2005 Nissan Titan with power to spare at fantastic savings. Or if you've got family, everyone will love the 2005 Nissan Quest. And the Nissan Frontier, if you're looking for a pickup that just won't quit. We'll meet you at the bottom line at Stones River Motors on Memorial Boulevard in Murfreesboro. Montgomery Bell Academy, home of the gentleman, scholar, and athlete since 1867. 
Middle Tennessee's only college preparatory boys school for grades 7 through 12, upholding a tradition of excellence in academics, athletics, and the fine arts. Producing the 2005 national championship debate teams, recent state championship football and baseball teams, and leading the state in national merit scholars. MBA offers a balance of perspectives with students from 19 public and 17 private schools. Now accepting applications for 2006. Second quarter begins here in Nashville Middle with back-to-back -back first down throws from Clint Marks, and they have it at their own 49. Changing the play right here again. Vandy's got a bunch of folks up on that line of scrimmage. Marks tries Gross, who has big oh. yardage, but it may come back. There is a marker in an area where one would suspect it's offensive holding. holding. The umpire throws it, it's holding, I guarantee you. Now, I want to touch on one thing, though, Willie. We talked about it briefly before the game started. We said that Middle Tennessee should be trying to play keep away, and I'll get it back to it right after the call. Holding, number 75 on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat down. But we talked about, we talked about time of possession. Watch here, here's the hold, the right tackle. Uh, oh, yeah, right guard. Yep. Ooh. And took a knee to the head. And a good shot. Brian Smith, the guilty party, and I'm but, sure his parents appreciate everybody knowing that. Just letting him know. But we talked about how we, Middle Tennessee should try to play keep away and keep Cutler off the field. Well, time of possession so far has not dictated that. Vandy having the ball for 10 minutes, Middle Tennessee having the ball for only five minutes. But I'm going to argue that the score is the low scoring kind of game that Middle Absolutely. should want in this. Absolutely. So after the penalty, it's first and 19, and Marks, who is already four of four, makes it five of five, a short strike to Bobby Williams to the 44 before Josh Allen, the right corner, makes the tackle. And that was the type of play that Vanderbilt wants to give up. They'll give up the short passes all night long with their young cornerbacks, but they don't want Middle to run after the catch. So far, they've done a good job with secure tackling. Good job right there by the Vanderbilt defender on the outside. And this is a young kid, Josh Allen, who's a redshirt freshman, who has taken that job. He's not a big guy, but it's, so it's crucial for him not to let those big guys get loose. Williams has been busy early. Three catches, 32 yards. Second and 16. They right. call Gross's number again. He got a couple to about the 46. It was Chris Booker out of Brandon, Mississippi, who and, made the tackle. And a nice job from his backside end. Tackle, the right tackle pulled, and Booker knows if his guy's going that way, more than likely they're going that way. The tackles have been the weak point of the middle offensive line. They have good experience in the middle. Vanderbilt has the experience on the defensive end position as we look at the first quarter stats. And look at the third down conversions, 0 for 2, and we're back into another third down from middle right here. The Blue Raiders need about 14 to keep this drive going. Vandy brings a couple of linebackers. Mark steps up. Oh. That one, St. Teal could not hold on to. Had he made the catch, he probably had first down yardage. It was not a bad throw. No, it was a good throw. It looked like he slipped. I mean, it looked like he slipped down. He tried to pit a patter his feet, come out of his cut and I think his feet just came out from underneath him. Once again, Vanderbilt will bring the pressure, but with their coverages, they will play soft, and they will force you to make good throws, especially in the middle of the field. That time, as you mentioned, Pat, the play was there. They just didn't quite execute it. Middle will show you a lot of this. They showed Alabama all of this four weeks ago when we saw him. Smith with another very good kick. Bennett from his 10 oh, goes nice down play. at his 10. Beautiful special teams work by the Blue Raiders. We have a timeout. Two minutes into the second quarter. The slugfest continues. Low scoring. Vandy by way of the Bryant Hanfelt field goal leads it three zip. Win 100 to $1,000 in free gas five times a day starting Monday morning on 103 WK. When trouble strikes, there's just one thing to do. Call the MIB, the man in brown. Andy and Barney are the man in brown.
around. Watch The Andy Griffith Show weeknights at 10 and 10.30 on UPN 30. Weeknights at 11 on UPN 30. Nashville has a new radio station, then you don't know Jack. 96.3 Jack FM, playing what we want. Everybody's heard about the bird. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Announcing a whole new taste in pizza. Papa John's totally new chicken bacon ranch. Grilled all white chicken, hickory smoked bacon, fresh sliced tomatoes and sweet onions with the new tangy ranch sauce. For a limited time, get a large chicken bacon ranch pizza for $11.99. We deliver. Call now or order at PapaJohns.com. Our new chicken bacon ranch pizza. The word is better. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Better than watching the game is being there. And the great people at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep in Springfield will get you there in style. Fans from all over Middle Tennessee drive to Gupton for their own home field pricing advantage. Yes, wear your team colors proudly this season in a brand new Gupton Dodge Chrysler or Jeep. And whether you work hard, play hard, or work hard just to play, the Gupton team will always save you money. Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Go, go! Gupton, it's about you. Gupton treats you right. Well, before the game, we flipped a coin, and Pat gave you the access car rental keys to the game. Willie, you get to start it. Let's kind of review and see where all this is. Well, Middle Tennessee is a good pass-heavy team. They wanted to balance out with some good running. They came in only averaging 2.9 yards a rush after finishing last in the Sun Belt in rushing. They haven't done that yet, and their confidence still is shaky as a result of it. Right, and one of the keys you see down at the bottom limit the yak yards after catch. And Vandy has definitely done that. The MTSU receivers have made some catches, but have been taken down immediately. Jay Cutler, 8 of 10 in the early going, and he brings Vanderbilt's offense out with poor field position. This is part of his game. He's got some uh -oh. wheels, and that one is incomplete. Excellent defensive play. Bradley Robinson already has three picks, and he came up with number, he was that close to number four. We saw him down in, 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 again in Alabama. This this kid's a good football player. Watch him plant and drive on the ball. He reads the route. As soon as he reads the route, you'll see Cutler on the roll. You know, Robinson's reading the route. He starts driving. You see him play in the route? Excellent job. That, that's a superb defensive effort right there. And as you could see, Cutler tried to put that into a very small hole. And he, that's confidence. They're trying to set up the screen, and they do to Jennings. And Middle smelled it out. Jonathan Bonner was there at the eight-yard line. Guys, it appeared that Middle knew what the play was very early. Yes, they absolutely did a good job of staying home. Deverick Scandrit, you'll watch him number 94 right here. He's going to stay home. He sees the play right there and reads 21 Jennings, and now plays over. Well, that's one of those, when you're free running, to, when if you're unblocked and you're going to the quarterback, a lot of times, you're not that good, so something's up, and he was smart enough to know, hey, I'm not that good. Let me peel back. Huge play for Middle's defense. They need a three and out to get the ball back for their offense, and they should get good field position if they do. Cutler with plenty of time, uh -oh. and it's intercepted by Polite. And Polite gets inside the five to the three. It was actually Jonathan Harris out of Montgomery, Alabama, and that time Cutler's confidence got him in trouble. The nickelback Jonathan Harris comes in and really does a nice job. He's playing inside on that slot, and you watch the way he just jumps the route. Take a peek right here. He doesn't even see him. You see that nickel back at the top of your screen? He says, I'm taking that. No way you're running that dig in front of me. And you mentioned it, George. Cutler has been so confident in situations like that, delivering the ball right into that area of the field. That's a great job of film study by Harris because he knows that Cutler likes to gun it right there to the chains. He played the route and stepped right in front of Marlon White. He felt that dig route coming across and jumped it. Uh, excellent defensive play. Eugene Gross, the tailback, has scored once this year. 
tried to get a second, but was denied at the three. Moses was the first of a couple of black and gold to put a stop to that. I'm going to tell you right now, you watch this bootleg's going to be wide open if they come back with it. Middle gets the pick by Jonathan Harris, a 15-yard return, and they are right on the doorstep, down 3 nothing. What a confidence booster this That's would be. That's I was just going. And the crowd in that end zone trying to give the Vanderbilt defense some help. They had a huge goal line stand to turn the game around at Arkansas in that win in week two. Let's see if they can do it again. This time they play fake. Chico uh -oh. it is oh. not caught. McAfee had it bobble around in the end zone. He couldn't come up with it. Now it's third down. Well, they went to the bootleg just like you called for, Pat. Now watch 47, Jonathan Goff. He's right there in position to make the play. You see number 85, you were right, George. You were calling it the whole Chicola time. Chicola was who I think you, you wanted were to throw to. It. Watch the tight end behind the fullback right here. You see him wide open. Mark's just got to put that over. Oh, man. It looked like Vanderbilt's defense stepped in. They took the timeout. We'll go to a break. Middle with its best scoring opportunity of the night, and the play that will decide it all is coming up here on UPN 30. Planning a vacation or a business trip? Is your car in the shop? Access Car Rental has the guaranteed lowest rates and free customer pickup. From fully equipped cars, vans, SUVs, and trucks, we meet your transportation needs. Weekend rates starting at just $14.99 per day. Call today or check online for more great rates. 36 convenient locations so we're close to you. Access Car Rental, your access to savings. You cheer every play, every first down, every end zone celebration. You bust your tonsils play after play and scream and shout like you've got a 260 pound linebacker on your tail. Then throw down a cold as ice Coke and get right back at it. Why? Because you can. Because you have to. Coca-Cola Football Town USA. Have you decided? Sirloin steak fingers. Whoa, Nelly! Barry, you just ordered yourself a Shoney's value basket. What's your game plan? Well, I ordered the sirloin steak fingers, Keith. I'm gonna eat them. Sounds good. What about defense? Huh? You gotta be ready. This lineup brings five great All-American baskets to the table. I'm ready, Keith. I'm ready! From burgers to chicken fingers, these value baskets are ready to be gobbled up. All for just $5.99. Hurry, because just like football season, they'll go away fast. For great food at a great price, it's down, set, Shoney. <laughs> Just when you need it most, Rivergate Toyota's certified used vehicles get more warranty. Now, every certified used Toyota carries a three-month, 3,000-mile comprehensive warranty. Plus, other warranties are now extended to seven years. Rivergate Toyota stands behind every certified used Toyota. Remember, the best new cars make the best used cars. Fuel efficient, warranty, and priced right. Toyota, moving forward. So come on in and see my good friends at Rivergate Toyota. Well, this is about as Shoney's red zone and offensive play as you can get. Middle has third and goal from Vanderbilt's three after the Jonathan Harris interception a moment ago. Marks from the gun will go quarterback draw. Middle has taken the lead. I like the play call. I really like the play call. I'm not going to kid you. It's smart. Hey, keep it in his hands. See if they're going to try to get a pass rush. See if they try to get aggressive. And that's exactly what they did. You watch him. He just sets his feet, reads the hole, and off he goes. He got some great blocks up front to create that little hole. And he just did get to that goal line. And I'm with you, Pat. I really like the play call because it's safe. Marks is a good athlete. You keep it in his hands. And MTSU with those eight to 10,000 Blue Raider fans who are here making a lot of noise. Colby Smith makes it seven to three. So MTSU takes the turnover. They capitalize. Three would have been a small defeat 
seven was a big victory. I wholeheartedly agree. There's your confidence that you're Absolutely. looking for. It's amazing how one play like that can make you feel a whole lot better. Now you know those memories up in that blue and white section yeah, of the stadium are uh -huh. thinking about 2000 and right. 2001. Two, no, we, we haven't lost here. We don't lose here. But it's all set up by just a fantastic play by Jonathan Harris. Now watch the guards here, Pat, in the middle of the offensive line. Right here, you're going to see the seal. There's 73. And then Gross makes a great block up on Moses' esophagy to open up that hole. Moses was waiting for Martz, but the little guy Gross took him out of the play. Watch Franklin, the right tackle. They try an inside stunt. Watch the right tackle here. Inside stunt, he takes him all the way across, and you're right, a nice block by Gross on Esefagy. Gamal Franklin with a nice block coming over from that tackle position. Well, Middle Tennessee opened as a 16 and a half point underdog, and a lot of us, when we saw that number, didn't really buy it to begin with. The blueprint that they have used to go about trying to pull this off, I think they're succeeding so far. Uh, don't, onside kick? <laughs> well, you know Andy as well as anybody. That's kind of his uh, M.O. from time to time. It wouldn't shock me. This would not shock me. Nope, it did shock me. <laughs> This one is about five yards deep, and Jackson Garrison will down it in the end zone. Just to be perfectly honest, we're thrilled up here that that didn't happen. Willie, we'd have heard this all night. <laughs> no first question. guess. It was a first guess. But, uh, you know, hey, it, it, you see Andy Mack, that's that we talked about confidence. How about confidence? Seven to three, you're in the middle of the second quarter. Let's go down to the sideline. Amy, what do you got for us? Well, on that previous offensive play rally by MTSU, Ralph McKenzie, number 95 for Vanderbilt, got his bell rung. According to the head trainer, he's going to sit out. They've tested him for a concussion. They ruled it. He does not have a concussion, but I guess he just got a little shaken up. He is questionable return to the game, but I have a feeling he's going to watch his defense out there and going to want to come back. He's very important to this team. He's one of those prized fifth-year seniors right now in his spot. Is, all right. That right now in the spot is Gabe Hall is a sophomore, so I'm sure he's going to want to get back out there. George, back to you. Cutler shows a little bit of his versatility coming off his first interception since week number two. He runs the option for nine. They don't run him with that play as much as they used to. No, but I'll tell you one thing. You see a lot of those white jerseys saying six has the ball. Let's all go jump on the pile. And he is really not shy about running. No. He doesn't I, really like to pitch unless he has to. I think he's as tough as nails, and he's got the moxie you want as a quarterback. I told you. He's going to bounce back from the interception. There's no question in my mind. Offensive coordinator's dream. Second and one. They convert as Jackson Garrison goes to the 35. He got six on the play, and middle was led by Weaver and J.K. Sab, a very active middle linebacker, their leading tackler, and a good football player. Now this is where this Vanderbilt team has been different from past Vanderbilt teams. Right now, the plays have been there. They have not executed very well. But this is where the mental toughness will come in. They just got hit with a big haymaker on the interception. Let's see how they bounce back. They've been behind in all four games that but they've won. This is what I expected from them. Middle creeping a lot of folks to the line. This time they go Jennings on the option. And he turns up field for about six, maybe seven, before he's run out by J.K. Sab, who runs coast to coast from his middle linebacker spot. Gain of seven on first down. Right, but it's still a gain of seven. And this is, I'm telling you, this is, Randy has to feel like, hey, let's line up and just go punch him right back. Don't just take it. Don't try to, you know, pit a patter. Just go get him. And right here, you see a perfect example of it. Tell you what, as I look around, there may not be more than about a thousand empty seats. Late arriving, big walk up crowd for a game that has gotten a lot of pub. Second and uh -oh. short, and look at the break on the football, but a marker is down. Ooh. Initially, Keon Raymond caused what Middle thought would be a turnover. Now you wonder. And first off, before we check the flag, we had one official that ruled the pass incomplete. So this is one where they're going to have to huddle up and figure out what happened. Yeah, but this is going to be pass interference. He was there a little bit early. Once again, they're reading those routes well. Pass interference, number two on the defense. Penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul.
automatic first down. So officially it's a seven yard gain for a Vanderbilt first down, but Willie, you're right. Middle is starting to really jump defensively on these patterns. Well, they're sitting on those 10 to 12 yard chunk patterns that they have really gone to town on all year long. So I'm wondering if you need to loosen them up with the deep ball. You're going to come back with a smoke, what we call a smoke route, where it looks like he's going or a wheel route, where it looks like it's a seven or eight yard pattern, and they end up going vertical. And now another flag on the far side of the field. That's going to be sideline. The get back coach is under fire here. For oh, he's in trouble. The get back coach is not doing his job. I'm telling you, usually it's the strength coach or it's, you know, it's, I'm serious, or it's one of the graduate assistants. Their job is you go up and down that sideline and you tell them, get back. Hey, get back. We can't afford a penalty. Sideline warning, Middle Tennessee. That's the second sideline warning. How many do you get? Three? How well, many do you get? Three I will strikes? say this. I like the fact that there are some warnings in it. This is a, an emotional game. It's an right. important game. And you don't want to see something like that help decide it. But it's not, you know, the sideline warning is not on the coaches. It's always going to be on either support staff or players. If the players are too close to the sideline, they call it. They run up the middle, and I think it was Jackson Garrison, and whoever it was got clobbered by a pile of Blue Raiders. 45, Sean Mosley out of Sylvania, Georgia, the first of a bunch who were in there. And some people are probably thinking, what's the big deal about the sideline? But one of the issues is the guys right. with the chains, they need to be able to, to get where they need to be. And the officials, the line judge and the, and the side judge, have to be able to move freely. Right there, you saw, you're not running into number 92. I'm telling you, Jeff Littlejohn is a load. I mean, he is all that in a bag of chips and maybe a bag of chips of Doritos. They list him at 318. That may have been yesterday. I would not want to have to block him. Short gain, cut on the ground, lost the football, and somebody behind him picked it up. And luckily for him, it was Jeff Jen Jennings who fell on the football. Officially, it's going to be a loss of five. And now let's see what happened. They almost looked like the running the fumble ruski for a second there. Nobody knew where the ball was. Watch this. Luckily for Vanderbilt, Jennings came in there because usually you see the, the quarterback scrambling for it. He almost threw the defense off because he never he never saw the ball. So that allowed Jennings to kind of pick his way in there before any of the white shirts saw. All right, Cutler looked down on the ground right in front of him. He thought it was still in front of him. He looked down, it was gone. But one of the linemen that kicked it back. Very it, fortunate for Vanderbilt there. MTSU has Vanderbilt right where they want it. Third and 15. Blue Raiders show blitz. Uh -oh. Cutler steps up. Got hit from behind. It'll be fourth down. MTSU's pressure caused that play. They brought an extra guy. The last couple times the Cutler's dropped back on just a simple drop. They've only brought four. This time they bring a fifth and Staten breaks free. Watch him. Nice move. Take it back inside. No help from the guard. Makes the hit on the quarterback. And really, I was looking down the field, Pat. There was not much there for Cutler. No, I mean, when, when you have to hold the ball this long, it, that means the coverage guys are doing their and job. And a lot of it is vision. There's no throwing lanes because all the throwing lanes are occupied by, by defenders. Bryant Honfeld's third kick oh, is kick. a bomb. Robinson backs up to his five. Needs a little bit of help. Got one crunching block and gets out to about the 15. So it's about a 10-yard return. We'll go to a break. We're midway through the second quarter. MTSU was the underdog coming in. They're up by four. The following is an Electric Power Company's update. Here are estimates from the Department of Energy. Natural gas prices up 46%. Propane up 24%. Electric rates increase only 8%. More in this team report. Sharon, that's because Tennessee has the fourth lowest electric rates in the country. And Chuck, does that translate into energy savings? Sure. Electric water heaters cost less to operate than gas systems, and they're easier to install. Thanks, Chuck. Middle Tennessee Electric, using electricity efficiently. It's good chicken. 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 Ow. No matter how you say it, McDonald's is the place for chicken. Like the all-new line of premium chicken sandwiches, chicken selects, or chicken McNuggets. The choice is yours at McDonald's.
So that's the last slide, right? Right. So I'm hitting send? Yeah. Wait. Who's presenting in Chicago? McLean. McLean? Yeah. He can do it. Right? Yes. McLean's on his own in Chicago. Yeah. Have a good flight. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. The BMW 5 Series with active steering. It handles so well. It's like riding on rails. Experience the pure joy of driving today. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Hey, don't forget at halftime, we will have the Middle Tennessee Electric Membership Corporation halftime show. Scores from around the country, first half stats and highlights, and plenty more coming. MTSU, after the Vanderbilt punt, will take over from its own 16, they're up 7-3, and you can feel as this game goes along that their confidence is growing. They run Eugene Gross on first down, a little counter tray for four. Moses Osefaji, did I say it right, Willie? Yes, and there's been about four different pronunciations after he kind of dropped the bomb at SEC Media Days that for three years we've been butchering his name. He's well, like Prince. is the latest. Hey, pretty soon he's just going to have a symbol like Prince. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Whatever you call him, call him a darn good football player. He's a good player. Outstanding. Penalty on the Commodores here. And it'll be a first down. It will be first and one. And I apologize for not picking it up. This is an offensive coordinator's dream. First and one. <laughs> hey, this I, I like this to be a waste play. Go vertical. Marks after a long count. Finds Ralph King, who does get the first down, actually, uh, excuse me, on that Ralph Hill out of Murfreesboro. Played at Riverdale High School. Brought down, it was Ralph King. And he was brought down by Hurdley Harrison. It would help if I could read. Tell you okay. what, Ralph King, Teron Henry, guys who grew up in Murfreesboro, playing for the Riverdale Warriors, winning a lot of games. That's got to help a program like Middle Tennessee to have guys that are just used to winning like that. They don't lose often down the road there. Marks will throw on first down, and he's going deep for Williams, who's got it inside the Vanderbilt 30. I got something. How about Williams? Before the play, Williams is in looking at the quarterback, trying to get his attention, saying, I don't know the play, I don't know the play. The defender relaxes for a minute, and it's a post route right over the top of everything. Boy, 43 yards, throw. Willie. A perfect throw by Clint Marks. Just hit him in stride. And we're starting to see a little bit of what made Marks so good a year ago. You can see Middle's confidence growing. Big underdog early. A lot of people didn't buy it. The turnover helped get them the score. And now they're marching again. King for short yardage. Maybe two before Moses Osefaji brought him down. And once again, Middle trying to get that balance in the running game. It really hasn't happened yet, but they're staying with the running attack. Ralph King hasn't had a chance to play too often this year so far, but we talked about his high school career. They won a state championship while he was a Riverdale Warrior along with one of their wide receivers, Teron Henry. Those guys put up some huge numbers. They got another kid, Suber. Keep an eye on that guy, number seven. And he's been Su slowed just a little bit with, a, with an injury. When he's healthy, he can fly. This middle drive started at their own 16, and thanks to the 43-yard bomb, they've really been moving it. Gross with a little extra effort got to the 24. He may have spun his way for one more than he should have. Rashard Langford out of Tanner, Alabama was in there. So was Marcus Bugs. Middle, huge play here on third and five. Right, but I, I, I like the fact that they keep going back to the running game. I mean, I think you have to do it. You have to force feed it. You have to believe it. You have to keep pushing it. 
A lot of this nearly 40,000 crowd on their feet, both for middle and for Vanderbilt. Marks needs about Here five, and Vandy, for all the world, showing blitz. He beat the bit blitz with the tight end, Chicola, and a first down at the Commodore 16, and Chicola is a good tight end that maybe they haven't used enough. And this is what Clint Marks does well. 70% pass completion rating last year. The dink and dunk, he can put that ball right on the numbers. That had to be a good throw because Vanderbilt was surrounding that route, but he put it right in there. 68 yards already for middle on this drive. They're up 7-3. You think they're confident now. You let them get six here, and you'll really see their confidence skyrocket. Marks again to the air. Good first down yardage. St. Teal stretches to the eight. That's not a fumble, but it is a gain of eight before Andrew Pace was able to get him. Good, safe, conservative call. You call it. Marks is delivering this football. He's getting the snap. He's not wasting any time, and he's shooting it out. That's what a good quarterback does in this offense right now. Tell you what, I'm impressed with uh, what Middle is bringing to the table offensively right now. Good, conservative quick things that are working for him. I like the idea of Chicola, and don't be surprised if they come back to him. Second and two, they'll run gross. Extra effort to the corner, touchdown middle. Uh-oh. Eugene Gross found a hole at the five, and suddenly all the pressure is on Vandy. This is a play where it's good to be a short running back. Now, when we see this replay, you're going to see him go right up into the hole, and he's going to get lost, but he's not down. He'll pounce out to the outside and beat Ben Coger on a one-on-one -on -one play to get the TD. We'll watch it after the kick. And, and what you're going to see, uh, 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 you know, I go back to what I said. I like the idea of keep running the football. Keep running the football. Colby Smith bangs home point number 14. MTSU, they have dominated the last eight minutes of this game. Let's take one more look at Eugene Gross's touchdown run. Now watch Gross. He's going to go right into the line. Where is he? Can't find him. And now he beats Coger to the outside. Great second effort not to give up on the play. Right, and that's yards after contact still. I mean, he has first contact right here at about what? The eight yard line, yards after contact. They got to make that tackle. And right now, we talk about confidence. If you're MTSU, you got that confidence now. And if you're Vandy, you know what? Watch, watch Jay Cutler's response. Well, I, and I think the other thing is watch the team's response. Do they keep their poise? They, they have so far this season. We'll see. But this is the this is the middle Tennessee team that a lot of Blue Raider fans were expecting to see going into the year. They had 18 starters coming back, and Andy McCollum knew that he had this kind of team in him. They absolutely should have beaten North Texas in week two and then just laid an egg against Akron. That was the one that really had everybody baffled. But now they're playing at the level that I think I, they, they knew they had in them. I just want to say something. Coaches don't forget how to coach. So anybody who's doubting Andy McCollum's a good coach, don't forget, he's a good coach. A very important drive coming up on Vanderbilt's side. Jay Cutler started out red hot. Five of five in the early going. His last 10 have resulted in four completions, one interception, and I would argue a couple of those have been a little bit forced. And I thought early in the game, Pat, that Vanderbilt's plays were there. They stopped themselves. But lately, Mark Kreiner and his defensive staff on the other sideline, I think, have taken some things away from Vanderbilt. It has been uh, the defense of middle one up on the Vanderbilt offense. Right, they're forcing them to do things that they're not accustomed to. Four wide receiver package, if you include the tight end Dunning. Cutler goes to the air and a strike to Bennett. And let me tell you something. If we see this one again, this was a heck of a catch. That that is and Bennett, you you love Bennett. I know you do, Will. You said this kid's explosive. But watch Jay Cutler, the old game on the golf course when guy hits it, you know, par three, sticks it tight to the pin, and the next guy does it even closer. And that's what Cutler's saying. Anything you can do, I can do better. That's why both of these quarterbacks are as effective as they are, throwing that ball in there with confidence. We saw Marks hit the slant on the drive before. Cutler comes right back. That was a buzz bomb that he just delivered for eight. 
There it Second is. Second and two, and he finds a wide open Eric Davis to the 48. 20 yards, big play, which is what Vanderbilt needs right now. You know what that was? That was a double move. You see here, watch Cutler. He gives a little head fake, showing the first route. Watch it right here. Clip fakes, and goes, to the, goes to the second move. Eric Davis's second catch of the night. That one for 20. And a first down with just over three minutes left in the half. A very important drive for Vanderbilt to get some points. And Cutler back to the air. Dunning wide open to the middle 30. That time, Jeremiah Weaver was the man who had to bring him down. Dunning right down the middle of the field, wide open. Dunning has had a big, big year. That was a nice fake to set that up. Nobody picked Dunning up coming off that line, but he has caught everything, and he's one of that group of about 10 or 12 seniors that have really flipped the switch from what we've seen in a lot of past Vanderbilt seniors that are tired of getting beat up. They have really had their best football to play so far this season. Dunning has really come out of nowhere. Now watch him. He's going to be uncovered here. And that's probably the easiest catch he's made all year long because he's made some spectacular ones in the first four he's games. He's sitting there right in the middle of the hole in front of Weaver and, and Cutler knows, hey, I told you, watch the risk. This is what you, this is the makeup of a great quarterback. Comes right back out, says, hey, don't worry about it, fellas. We'll go get ours right now, get back on the board, and go from there. Middle took the timeout. I happen to think it's a very good timeout because Andy McCullum saying, I don't like the way this is going. I'm going to change the mood of this. Basketball. Doesn't it remind you a little bit of basketball? Hey, let's, that's too many. Let's take a T.O. right here. That is exactly what it was. If you could call a 20-second timeout, that's what it would be. <laughs> exactly. Jay Cutler, the Southeastern Conference's Offensive Player of the Week, th three weeks ago when they went to Arkansas and won. They opened, as most of you know, with a come-from-behind win at Wake Forest. But I think it was the drive at the end of the Arkansas game that solidified not only him, but this team as something a little different. Yeah, they're, they're a lot better than what people gave them credit for in the preseason. And that guy, I'm going to say it again, he's special. He's got, he's got all the tools and the best tool, short-term memory. You throw a pick. No big deal. You get stopped, no big deal. Just keep going. He could be a relief pitcher. No doubt. He's three of three on this drive for 50 yards. He calls his own number, gets inside the 20. He was an eyelash away from going the distance. Weaver got him with the shoestring right there. Jeremiah Weaver saved middle six on that play. Now watch him read the blocks on this. Pat, he's going to cut inside. It almost looks like a broken play right here, but he sees the wall developing and a great tackle right there as the last resort. He is gone goodbye if the tackle is not made by Jeremiah Weaver. Right. Watch watch the block by the guard. They pull the guard, and then he gets a nice block from the big fella, Chris Williams, that big, massive offensive guard, 6'7", 315. Vandy has driven more than 60 on this drive, and Cutler may have just thrown that one away. It was officially intended for Dustin Dunning. Let's talk about Dunning for a second. I think you've got two really good tight ends in this game. Shakola for middle, Dunning for Vanderbilt, and a lot of teams don't use this weapon well enough. I think both of these do. So far, I mean, I don't think middle used him much early in the year. The first three games, we didn't see enough of Shakola. Now we're starting to see them incorporate him into the offense. Dunning is definitely used. Am I right, Willie? He has been a very big part of this offense. Cutler with time, and it looked like his receiver, Earl Bennett, fell down, and that gave a couple of defensive backs on middle side the opportunity to pick. He is lucky because Weaver was playing one free, which means he's got the middle of the field and he reads the quarterback. They were trying to get that slant. Weaver read it. If he doesn't get rid of that that quick, if that's not such a bullet, that's going the other way. And middle is taking away Vanderbilt's comfort zone because they have gone to that place so many times. Looked like there might have been some contact in there. The Vanderbilt fans were calling for the, uh, the grabbing of the jersey. Bennett got tangled up. And now a timeout is called by Vanderbilt. And that will give them one left. Andy McCullum on MTSU sideline. Deep down, he's got to be thrilled with where his team is right now. And on Vanderbilt's side, 
They're in field goal range right now, but if they have to settle for three and not six, more confidence for MTSU. I, I don't know. I think I, I just think right now Vanderbilt Vanderbilt has responded. They, they've responded by going right down the field. I mean, this is they know it's only they got to believe inside themselves. It's only a matter of time before we we start putting big points on the board. They have to believe that in their head. If you're Andy McCollum, you got to feel good about what you're doing. So a big, big play coming up here in the Shoney's red zone for Vanderbilt and they have as we mentioned before they came in there as good as anybody in the country in fact number four to be exact in the country on third down conversions at 55 percent and, well, and in, in at, fact look if you look numbers. at what they've done in a situation like this third and ten they have been eight of 13 coming into tonight on third and seven or longer so third and long doesn't no, bother them. no it doesn't frazzle them but you look at them in the red look at the efficiency 14 touchdowns four field goals and they've only been stopped three well pat give me your theory because in years gone by they have struggled whether it's been the shoney's red zone or or your red zone they've struggled right why are they not now they're confident confidence a confidence is without question it it just bleeds right out of them right now. When they get down there, they know they're going to get it in. Blue Raider fans making some noise right in that end of the field, right in front of where Vanderbilt is. And Four wide receivers in a wing. And middle backs away with a three-man rush. Cutler steps up. Was it caught? The answer is yes. Davis for a clutch first down at the MTSU 5. What a throw. Boy, he holds it and holds it and holds it here. Watch the protection by the offensive line. Cutler waits and waits, and then here comes Davis. How did he get that around the linebacker? You know what he did? He was waiting for that. He saw the linebacker working to that side, and he threw it on his back shoulder and said, hey, I'm getting this in there. That's confidence. Another what clutch catch over the middle of the field by Eric Davis, who has made a bunch of them just like that this year. Play action? Nope. Instead, Jennings short yardage before one of those active linebackers got in there. You know, and I like just good composure right here by Vanderbilt. Brandon Perry was that linebacker, and he stopped the play for maybe a yard. Vanderbilt has run the ball effectively in this area of the field, and that's one of the reasons the red zone effectiveness has been what it has. But with the clock ticking here, you got to think about picking your spots as to when you run it. You only got one timeout to work with. And remember down here, Cutler has good wheels. He'll roll on this. Late option, Jennings oh, did not nice get in. Bumped play. out at about the two. Nice play. That's a nice defensive play right there. And Cutler looked like he got popped on his left hand pretty good. Let's see if we can tell on the pitch. Right here, watch the safety coming inside out. That's number five, it looks like. That's number five, and that's uh, Damon Nixon makes a nice play right there. I, I think they got a pretty good spot. Oh, they got a nice the play. It's inside the one. It's a good job by Jennings to dive towards the pylon, even though he didn't get there. To get it down to the one, it helps. They run, uh -uh. and they do not get there. They lost the yard. Jeff Littlejohn. The truck. Yeah, don't don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. Middle thought they had the ball for a minute there. Okay, let's let's make the call here. You've got fourth and a long yard and a half, two yards. What are you thinking here? Golly, look at Little John just knife through and make that play. They're gonna go for it. They, I don't see Henfeld come on the field right now. I'm going the other way, Pat. I think Vanderbilt's gonna run the clock down and, and then kick out. the field goal. And that's safe. That's smart. That, that's what Cutler's going to tell him, or at least they're going to think about it, maybe. So this long drive, 78 yards plus, about to end, and Hanfelt is going to come back into the game. He hit earlier tonight from 42. This one essentially an extra point. Well, they still have not sent Hanfelt out there yet, so... I'm not 100 percent sure they're going to kick it here but at the two yard line you got to figure Pat that's a that would be a gutsy call to go for the six. Yeah I mean they, they just lost yardage on that play. Hey you know, what, you know what I've noticed lately 
How about the little ear? They put the now everybody puts their mouthpiece on their ear. That's like the new fad. Have you seen that? See that right there over his right ear? What's up with that? I don't think that's too sanitary. <laughs> Do you think they're worried about sanitary, Pat? You're not. You, I mean, what did you use to When you used to play, don't tell me you didn't have grass and stuff in that mouthpiece. I didn't mouthpiece. even wear a mouthpiece. <laughs> if your wife sanitary is goes out the window. This, if she's listening to this, she's saying, he said that. She's a saint. I, 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 she's a saint. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, of all the things that have come out of your mouth in the years we've done games, that's the craziest I've heard yet. I just don't get it. That's the new fad. I think it's a fascist day. Let me stick my mouthpiece on my ear. Come on. <laughs> We'd have been better off going to a break. <laughs> Hanfeld does trot on the field. So it is the kicking unit. They'll play for three. Maybe. Because remember, if you're thinking in that direction, the conspiracy theory says <laughs> Cutler is the holder. Essentially an extra point. And now middle will step into a little gamesmanship and they'll take a timeout. Freezing the kicker on a 20 yard. You know, I'm not big on that. I, you know, we, we've talked about that before. I'm not, I'm just not, I, I'm not, a, I'm not a big one on that. Well, there we are. This is the. <laughs> Wait, let me get my is, mouthpiece. <laughs> make sure you wash. But that, that's Pat, who's who's going to do some washing at halftime. Yeah. This is Willie. Willie, step up there. That's you, who's not as worried about sanitary. And here's the third member who could care less. But we're having a good time tonight. This is a great environment for a game that has gotten an awful lot of publicity. MTSU at 0 and 3, and we thought after we saw them against Alabama three weeks ago that they were better than this, and they've shown it tonight. Oh, without question, I told you, guys, don't forget how to coach. I, I thought Andy Mack was a good coach before. I think he's a good coach now. Had some tough breaks. Hey, move on. And there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, I told you Vanderbilt was going to take Middle Tennessee lightly, but I really didn't think I didn't hear anything all week that suggested that they were going to take Middle lightly. I really didn't. No. But I just think Middle has stepped up their game the way we knew they had the ability to do. I totally agree with you, Willie. So once and for all, Brian Hanfeld will try what amounts to an extra point. He knocks it dead center. And now it's a 14 to 6 MTSU lead. And Pat, I'm going to say this when you drive 78 yards and only get three, I think it's a victory for Middle's defense. Some, they feel like it's a victory, but Vanderbilt also has to feel like it's somewhat of a victory. We responded, we came down, we put some points on the board. Hey, both teams have to feel like, okay, you know, we're just kind of, you know, first six, seven rounds of a big fight. You jab, you feel it out, you get a couple shots in there, and finally you get to those later rounds and try to throw the haymakers. Tell me this, at halftime, Bobby Johnson's team goes in down eight. Is this a Newt Rockney speech, or is this a, here are, the, here are the adjustments we have to make? You know what, good coaches, and I know Bobby Johnson's a good coach, he's gonna go in there and say, okay, fellas, look, We've been down before, no big deal. Let's just go, here's what we gotta do. Not, no no hysteria, no, oh my gosh, we're losing. Come on, you got, you're not gonna hear any of that. It's yeah. gonna be, hey. I think go. if anything, settle down Absolutely. a little bit. And they settled the game down on that drive, I thought, but overall, I don't think it's a case of Vanderbilt coming out flat or lethargic. No, I think no. maybe they've been almost too jacked up. I agree with you, and if you're Andy Mack, you're saying, hey guys, we gotta pour it on. Hanfelt delivers the squib kick, St. Teal. Not exactly sure how far to take this. Goes down on a knee at the 18. And my guess is that middle will run out the clock and be very happy with the eight point lead. But I got to be a little surprised that Santiel, I know. as dangerous as he is, why not try to run it back? I, I agree with you. I would have at least tried to get something out of that. You never know. Miss a tackle, break a tackle, and off you go. Well, I'll tell you, Vanderbilt's coverage team has got to be, you know, you see that happen, you ooh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, because you you got the pressure on you oh, there yeah. at the end of the half. Now, middle gets the ball to start the second half. Keep that in mind. Marks goes to a knee. First half is history. Wow. Both teams go to their respective locker rooms. On MTSU side, they've got to be thrilled where they are. And on Vanderbilt's side, a little bit of nervousness. 4-0, a lot of bowl talk, a lot of this is a critical, got to win game. 
Interesting second half coming, guys. Yeah, th this has been exactly what we thought it would be. A nice knock them, drag them out, backyard ball. I love it. Love it. The red it, zone has been a good thing for middle, not as good for Vanderbilt. Okay, let's check in. Amy has MTSU coach Andy McCollum. Amy? Amy, go ahead. I see you've got All Coach, right, Coach McCollum. McCollum. You guys are typically a first-half team. You score a lot of your points in the first half. How are you going to keep that momentum going? Oh, you know, we just we know it's 0-0 zero, zero right now. We got to come out and play hard this second half. We know we're, this game is way, way far from anything. That's a good football team, and they just showed down that last drive. So we got a lot of corrections to get How done. How important was it to get that stop and not get them in the end zone? Big time, big stop, big stop for us, and good, great stop for the defense. All right, Coach. Thanks so much. Good luck. All right, George, that'll do it for now. Back to you. Okay, Amy, thank you very much. We'll go to the break here at Vanderbilt Stadium. Here at the intermission, it's MTSU leading Vanderbilt 14 to 6. It's homecoming for the Blue Raiders as they host Louisiana Lafayette. Come out early for the homecoming parade at 11. Enjoy the Blue Raider experience with live music and activities for the kids. First 5,000 fans through the gate will receive the free Blue Raider sports bracelet. Come see what blue can do for you. Tickets on sale now at one 8 yes mtsu it's the final days of Chrysler Employee Pricing Plus. Hurry in now for the best selection of remaining 05s. They're going fast, so get to your Chrysler dealer today for employee pricing plus cash allowance on Town & Country, PT Cruiser, and Crossfire Limited. All with our employee pricing plus a combined cash allowance of up to $3,000 on select models. Hurry in while supplies last. Don't miss out. Visit your Chrysler dealer today or visit Chrysler.com slash clearance. Gas prices getting to you? Wouldn't you like to fill up for only $8.57? It all depends on your ride. Pick a Honda bike from America's Motorsports and you'll be cruising the highways and saving money on gas. Great combo. America's Motorsports and Honda. So if expensive transportation is cramping your style, get a new style. Ride a Honda motorcycle from America's Motorsports. Choose the CBR 600 RR, the Shadow 750 or 1100, or a VTX 1300. We have them all. America's Motorsports. America's Motorsports. Nashville and in Dixon. Everybody's heard about the bird. bird. Announcing a whole new taste in pizza. Papa John's totally new chicken bacon ranch. Grilled all white chicken, hickory smoked bacon, fresh sliced tomatoes and sweet onions with the new tangy ranch sauce. For a limited time, get a large chicken bacon ranch pizza for $11.99. We deliver. Call now or order at PapaJohns.com. Our new chicken bacon ranch pizza. The word is better. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> Tennessee Electric halftime show here on UPN 30. After one half of play, the MTSU Blue Raiders on top of the Vanderbilt Commodores, 14 to six. Vanderbilt jumped on top, three nothing after a Brian Hanfeld field goal in the first quarter. But Clint Marks, a three yard touchdown run gives MTSU the 7-3 lead. Then Eugene Gross with an eight yard touchdown run to push it to 14-3. Vanderbilt with a late field goal in the first half, pulling them within 14-6. Interesting second half ahead. We'll have more of the Middle Tennessee Electric halftime show live from Dudley Field here at Vanderbilt in a moment. Need your contractor's license to get the best jobs? More and more people are hiring only licensed contractors. Get your license now. American Contractors Exam Services is now offering their seminar here with their no pass, no pay guarantee. Commercial, residential, electrical, and mechanical trades, all exam areas are covered. Call now for information on the next class, the no pass, no pay seminar, 1-800-992-1910. 1-800-992-1910. Everybody wants to bring their family together. Make special memories that leave a lasting impression for only $15. The Predator's new Family Fun Zone is the place to go for family-sized action, hit music, food kids love, and all kinds of fun. Be a big hit with the family without taking one to the wallet. A $15 ticket in the Family Fun Zone puts you just 75 feet from the ice and brings your family even closer together. For tickets, call 615-770-PUCK. Visit NashvillePredators.com or stop by any Ticketmaster. The Nashville Predators. It's go time. The 
If you don't know Nashville has a new radio station, then you don't know Jack. 96.3 Jack FM, playing what we want. Welcome back to the Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Show here at Vanderbilt University. Halftime score, the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders 14, Vanderbilt Commodores 6. A very happy athletics director for the Blue Raiders alongside Chris Massaro joining us here on the Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Show. Your impressions, Chris, of the first half so far? Well, it was a good first half. That uh, Obviously, being ahead is where we want to be. but. We need to control the ball a little bit more. They had a two to one time possession on us and I'm getting a little worried about our defense uh, being out on the field so long. An early morning for you, the Raider relay. I know that you had an early leg in that and we have some videotape. Tell me oh about my. your performance today, Chris. Oh, look at that. We had a lot of fun. Oh, here I go. <laughs> it looks like I need to get run a little bit more. Uh, but that was a lot of fun and I'll tell you, it's great to have a tradition like that to run the ball all the way to Vanderbilt and we had a lot of great people participate including my kids. That's who was with you there, huh? Yeah, they, they're, they're smoking their old man in that one. <laughs> How are you all adjusting to life in Middle Tennessee? When you took this job coming from South Carolina, I know that there were probably a lot of challenges, but has it been everything that you, you dreamt it would be? Oh, absolutely. And, and I go to sleep every night with a smile on my face because I really believe where Middle Tennessee can go. And we can really, we are sitting on a powder keg. We're at a pivotal point. And when this thing explodes, we're all gonna enjoy the ride. Games like this, Chris, are probably wonderful. The exposure that you get, especially uh, if you can duplicate what you've done against Vanderbilt the last two times you played them. Well, I'm looking for the light switch so we can turn out the lights and go home because it would be a big win for us to win a Vanderbilt. This would be our third time in a row, and that's important for us to, to be dominant in our backyard. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship with Andy McCollum. I know that there's been a lot of, I guess, questions about his future at Middle Tennessee State. Tell me about your relationship yeah, with him. Yeah, there's been a lot of speculation, and it's really premature. I mean, we've had, uh, we've played three games this season, one of which is at Alabama, and as we found out now, Alabama's a heck of a football team, and we played them as well as anybody has, and so it's premature. Uh, I like Andy McCollum. I, I enjoy his company, and I hope he enjoys mine, and, and we share a lot of laughs together, and I'm rooting for him. Well, we appreciate you joining us on the halftime show. I know you're, you got that smile on your face. I do, I do. It's been a good half, but we got one more to play. All right, we'll see if you keep it at the end of the game. Chris, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having us, and thanks for broadcasting this game. All righty, that's uh, Middle Tennessee State Athletics Director Chris Massaro joining us at halftime of the Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Show. Your score here at Dudley Field. As the band plays on, Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders 14, Vanderbilt Commodores 6. More of the halftime show coming up next. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Brought to you by your local State Farm agent, Andy Womack, 898-0850. Southern Home Builders, traditional living with modern appeal. Greg has trouble getting up for breakfast, but today he's in for a treat. Because right now at Jack in the Box, he can try my new ciabatta breakfast sandwich. Lightly toasted ciabatta bread stacked with black forest ham, bacon, eggs, melting cheese, and hollandaise sauce. Greg, put some jammies on. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Brought to you by your local State Farm agent, Bobby Allen. 731-7457. The Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Report rolls on from Dudley Field here at Vanderbilt. 
The Blue Raiders from MTSU leading Vanderbilt 14 to six at halftime. It's my pleasure to welcome in Chancellor Gordon Gee from Vanderbilt. Thank you very much for joining us, Chancellor. First off, your impressions of this first half. Well, um, obviously, I would prefer that it were uh, 14 to six for Vanderbilt, needless to say. But um, uh, you know, these uh, MTSU is a very fine football team. They they're not an 0 and 3 football team. They are a much better team than that. And and I think that we have uh, realized that, and we're just playing a very fine football team. Obviously, again, I'm very hopeful that uh, we'll come back in the second half. That fortunately is the reason we play two halves. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this crowd is a little subdued right now, Chancellor, but talk about this season. I mean, it has been a frenzy around West End, and that has to be something terrific for you to see. Well, 4-0 uh, is better than 0-4. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And winning uh, uh, creates a great attitude among our students and uh, among our faculty, among our fans. And so it really has been a, uh, a wonderful time for us, and, uh, and we're enjoying it because uh, we also believe that we're doing it the right way. I'm curious about your relationship with head coach Bobby Johnson. After two years, two years in which the Commodores won two games, each of them, you decided to give him a contract extension. You saw something in Bobby Johnson that maybe other people didn't see, and it's paying off this season. Well, uh, Bobby Johnson is a man of real uh, quality and character, and he, he fits perfectly the Vanderbilt model. He is a guy who uh, won't even let me swear at his team or with his team or whatever, and uh, he, he, he has uh, great discipline. He has great assistant coaches. We just needed to give them time because this was a program that was not uh, uh, had not had great success for 20 years, and one does not turn that around, particularly in the SEC overnight. Not the first time that you've believed in a coach who proved you right. Yeah, yeah. Bill McCartney. Uh, everyone wanted me to fire him, and uh, <laughs> and in fact, uh, I was getting ready to, and then he convinced me to stay, and he went on uh, and won the national championship. John Cooper had uh, was one of the most successful coaches in uh, the history of any football program and of course uh, uh, we did not make any changes with him so uh, at Ohio State so I I think consistency and uh, longevity pay off you've mentioned a couple of times during this interview doing it the right way very important here can you talk about the restructuring of, of the athletic department two years removed now how do you look back well, at it? I, I well I look back on it with a lot of pride uh, but obviously at the time it was I felt like a, a small boy walking a picket fence uh, I was uh, thrilled but in danger of being impaled but the issue uh, for us was that um, we wanted to make certain that whether you were a student athlete a student debater a student uh, a student oboe player that you were fully integrated into the life of the university and that you were not separated, segregated, isolated. And the, the challenge of intercollegiate athletics in this country is that many, many athletic departments carry the name of the university on the front, but they don't carry the values of the university in their heart. And we just need to make that happen. Your involvement in sports, I'm fascinated by it. I don't know if you played it as a youngster. No. Look at me. I mean, uh, well, I, d I didn't want to say that, Chancellor. Right. I figured I'd let you yeah, say that. I mean, I, I look like <laughs> Orville Redenbacher, uh, or, the, or I, I am, I am, I am the geek of the week. But there's no doubt about it. But, but no, I love intercollegiate athletics. But I, but, but you know, I'm one of those people who believes in the role of intercollegiate athletics in terms of the life and culture and enthusiasm in the university. But I want to be able to sleep at night. There are a lot of university presidents in this country that have winning football programs who uh, toss and turn in the middle of the night because they're not certain what those programs are doing in terms of their university. Well, we wish you the best of luck, and we Thank certainly you. wish the Vanderbilt Commodores a little bit better luck in the second half. What do you think the team needs to do to, to maybe get this thing back uh, on track in their well, favor? Well, I, I think that I think they need to come out with a lot of uh, enthusiasm, and uh, we need to stop MTSU on the first drive. We need to go down and score, and then we need to get uh, moving on uh, on uh, the next two or three possessions. The crowd, are you pleased with the turnout? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got nearly a full crowd here. This is just great. This is what we should have. All right. Well, best of luck in the second Thank half. Thank you, sir. I appreciate here. it. We really appreciate you uh, joining you. us here. Thank you. All right, we've got video of the band here at uh, the UPN 30 uh, Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Report. We're going to take a break as we take a look at the marching bands down on the field. Again, the score here at halftime. Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders 14, Vanderbilt Commodore 6. Let's listen to the band. Hi, I'm Albert Hainsworth, Pro Defensive Tackle. When I travel in the offseason, the only car rental company I use is Access Car Rental. They have every size vehicle with the lowest rates. If you need something large, they've got it. 
minivans, explorers, exhibitions, and excursions, all with DVD players. They also have 12 and 15 passenger vans at great low rates. With 36 convenient locations across Tennessee, Access Car Rental has a location near you. Get access, call or visit the website to reserve your vehicle today. What makes Mack of Nashville U.S. Dealer of the Year? We offer new and used truck sales, service, parts, truck rental, and leasing. Mack of Nashville offers the full line of UD Nissan trucks to keep your business running. From big tractors to small vans, we have you covered. And for your mobile fleet service needs, call the pros. Our highly trained technicians will come to your location 24 hours a day, 7 days a week with our fully equipped mobile service truck. Call Mack of Nashville and see why we are the U.S. Dealer of the Year. Welcome back inside the Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Report. Live here at Dudley Field, the Vanderbilt Commodores trailing the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders 14 to 6. Not a lot of first half highlights, but we do have some that we want to get you caught up on. And I guess for the most part, it was a pretty good first half for the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. Here's their first touchdown. Clint Marks doing it himself. The quarterback with a three-yard touchdown run going head first into the end zone. That gave the Blue Raiders a 7-3 lead. Later in the second quarter, it's the Blue Raiders again. Eugene Gross now, not sure about the tackling here. Eugene Gross gets in for the touchdown. That makes it a 14-3 Blue Raider lead. But there were some Vandy highlights. Let's move ahead. Third, uh, Jay Cutler at quarterback for Vanderbilt, fakes the handoff to Jeff Jennings, and then goes down the middle to his wide open tight end. Mr. Dunning right there with the well, excellent catch. And then let's keep it going on the Vanderbilt offense. They did have some nice drives at times. Jay Cutler, this one is going to lead to a first half field goal. Cutler getting it out into the flat, throwing a rope to Eric Davis right there. That did lead to a field goal. And let's take a look at some first time, uh, first half stats. Actually, right. first half stats it is on this Middle Tennessee Electric halftime report. Here at Dudley Field, the score 14 to 6, Middle Tennessee State. Six first downs for the Blue Raiders compared to 11 for Vanderbilt, yet the score is an eight point advantage for the Blue Raiders. Rushing yards, not much for Middle Tennessee State, only 51 for Vanderbilt. Passing yards, fairly equal. Jay Cutler with 17 more passing yards than Clint Marks. Third down conversions, just three of nine for the Commodores, two of five for Middle Tennessee State. And the time of possession, almost uh, a 10 minute advantage for the Vanderbilt Commodores. But again, the Vanderbilt Commodores, 4-0 on the season, looking to move to 5-0 for the first time since 1943. Somewhat in jeopardy right now as Middle Tennessee State is on top, 14-6. The second half is coming up here live on UPN 30 uh, here at Dudley Field. And we're gonna uh, check in with head coach Bobby Johnson in a few moments, but first we're gonna take a commercial break. This is the Middle Tennessee Electric Halftime Report. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Brought to you by your local State Farm agent, Floyd Wilson, 893-7112. Gotta do something about this fence. Guess I better go get the tiny lassos. It's not the same old West at Longhorn Steakhouse. Try our Flo's filet and lobster tail served with melted butter. Longhorn Steakhouse, there's a new West in town. Stones River Motors in Murfreesboro is having a year-end clearance, so this is the best time to get that new Nissan Altima you've always wanted. Or the great new 2005 Nissan Titan with power to spare at fantastic savings. Or if you've got family, everyone will love the 2005 Nissan Quest. And the Nissan Frontier if you're looking for a pickup that just won't quit. We'll meet you at the bottom line at Stones River Motors on Memorial Boulevard in Murfreesboro. Is the Energy Guide label on appliances, including water heaters, accurate? Electric rates here are lower than the national average, so operating costs will even be less than what's posted. Are there any power company incentives for installing electric water heaters? You bet. You may be eligible for cash rebates of $50 or more on electric water heaters. 
How long will a water heater last? Seven years is an average, but their high efficiency water heaters guaranteed for life. Middle Tennessee Electric and TVA, saving you money by using electricity efficiently. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Brought to you by your local State Farm agent, Philip Haynick, 893-3534. Tonight's game is presented by American Home Mortgage, Longhorn Steakhouse, Purity Zero Plus Milk, and 96.3 Jack FM. George Plaster, Willie Donick, Pat Sperduto with you from Vanderbilt Stadium. Second half about to get underway. MTSU will get the football first. That's Bryant Hunfeld, young man who played at NBA in his high school career and he backs St. Teal about six yards deep for the touchback. Well he has really helped the Vanderbilt kicking game not just with the field goals that we saw in the first half but that's another element he can boom those kickoffs. I'll tell you one thing he's done a decent job punting too. We talked about him almost getting the job by default. He's done a decent job there too. MTSU took a Jonathan Harris interception about midway through the second quarter. He returned to Vanderbilt's three and from that point on it was all MTSU to the intermission 14 6 our score MTSU going after its first win of the year Vanderbilt at 4 and 0 trying to get off to its best start in about 50 years a lot on the line here in the second half Mark starts uh -oh. with the throw that never happened Chris Booker just went right up inside and was barely touched. He just absolutely got to the quarterback before Marks could even take a look. Nice little rip move by Booker. Watch him here. He's on the right side of your screen. Inside. Oh, no, it's a swim. Quick swim. Sack. Very nice swim. What, what do you mean by swim? Swim. Reach, grab, bring the other arm over, get in there. He almost reaches across with his left hand, almost like they're swimming in a pool. Exactly. And that brings a lot of these 40,000 to their feet. MTSU with second and a bundle from its own 12. Marks will try to throw. And that one almost intercepted. The break on the football came from Josh Allen. MTSU rushed some patterns in the first half. Vanderbilt kind of returned the favor there. Pressure again by Booker, this time again. Inside move, gets heat on the quarterback, forces a bad throw, almost intercepted. Well, that, that is different than what we saw in the first half, the pressure on the quarterback. And that's a welcome thing for Vanderbilt to get pressure with their front four. That's been a big sore spot in the last few years. MTSU, even if they're not able to convert and get the 18, they would like to at least get a chunk of it and return some semblance of field position. Marks again will throw. This is the shuffle to Gross. Gross gets to the 25, gets a first down on a huge run, 23 yards out of nowhere. I was dead wrong. I was just about to say, Gross misses the blitzing linebacker. Design play. Watch this. Watch Gross. Slips up. Watch the linebacker come off the edge. Nice play set. Superb job by the line, but Lyman getting up to the linebackers and then gross on effort. Yak yards. Let's go back to our keys to the game. Yak yards right there. Yak as in yards after catch on after the, contact. Yes. Huge play for MTSU and that kind of quiets things down for the moment. Gross again got about four before Vanderbilt reacted. Looked like Ralph McKenzie was there. So was Lamar Divins about three on first down and now the crowd just has the air go out of the balloon they've got to rev it back up what a huge play that was by gross and if you're and if you're mts i like the play calling right now because they stick back to the running game and that shovel pass is an extension of a draw and you're right willie it was like it popped the balloon and all the air went out for a moment two minutes into the second half MTSU was a 16-point dog coming in. Don't think that for a minute. They've played way better than that. 
Bobby Williams, his fifth catch of the night, but he got cleaned up quickly by Josh Allen. Short yardage, maybe three, and it'll be third and three. And that's a good job by tackling on that sideline by Allen to not give up any yards after the catch. Now, I want you to watch something. If we see this pass, watch the defensive end come in. You've got to get your hands up. You know they're looking for the hot route here. And you can see him just get up a little bit late. Remember, rule number one, if you can't get there, get your hands up immediately. Williams has been busy tonight. Bobby Williams, five catches, good for 80 yards in what has been his best game so far as a Blue Raider. MTSU needs three to keep this drive going. Marks will put it up, and that one was a little behind the intended receiver, Teron Henry. So Vanderbilt's defense does do the job on the second three, and they'll get the football back. And that was a good read by Moses Osefaji. He was reading the eyes of Clint Marks, sitting in there right in the area of the chains, and he knew where he wanted to go with the ball. But that's, a, that's, a, that's a testament to what Middle Tennessee has done. Running the ball and throwing the ball down the field has forced those linebackers to drift back a little bit. MTSU at least moves the field position back as they kick the football. This is another really good kick. Bennett will let it go. It hits inside the 15, and MTSU right there on the 15 to down it. And they were lucky that didn't hit one of those, those defenders. We've got a timeout. Three minutes into the third quarter, we've got a heck of a finish coming. It's MTSU by eight. Have you decided? Sirloin steak fingers. Whoa, Nelly! Barry, you just ordered yourself a Shoney's value basket. What's your game plan? Well, I ordered the sirloin steak fingers, Keith. I'm gonna eat them. Sounds good. What about defense? Huh? You gotta be ready. This lineup brings five great All-American baskets to the table. I'm ready, Keith. I'm ready! From burgers to chicken fingers, these value baskets are ready to be gobbled up. All for just $5.99. Hurry, because just like football season, they'll go away fast. For great food at a great price, it's down, set, Shoney. <laughs> What makes Mac of Nashville U.S. Dealer of the Year? We offer new and used truck sales, service, parts, truck rental, and leasing. Mac of Nashville offers the full line of UD Nissan trucks to keep your business running. From big tractors to small vans, we have you covered. And for your mobile fleet service needs, call the pros. Our highly trained technicians will come to your location 24 hours a day, 7 days a week with our fully equipped mobile service truck. Call Mac of Nashville and see why we are the U.S. Dealer of the Year. Get a new Kawasaki ATV from America's Motorsports or race on a new Kawasaki motorcycle. Pay zero down with low payments at only 4.99% APR. Imagine cruising the highways or blazing through the trails. So how do you like your Kawasaki? On the rocks or straight up? Pick your pleasure. Only 4.99% APR. Everything Kawasaki on sale at America's Motorsports. Two locations, Nashville and in Dixon. America's Motorsports. series with active steering it handles so well it's like riding on rails experience the pure joy of driving today BMW the ultimate driving machine Vanderbilt Stadium within about a thousand of capacity this 83 year old facility that was renovated back in 1982 and this is one of its Really good moments. MTSU and Vanderbilt for the third time in the last five years. Cutler swings it out to Jennings, and Jennings tackled in the open field. And then a very late marker goes down at about the 17. And this might go against Vanderbilt. The bench on the far sideline is pointing back towards that's the a, end zone. That's a weird place for a flag to come from. That's that's the side judge who works down the sideline, usually calls pass interference and stuff like that. This time he's going to call block in the back. I'll tell you what, Middle Tennessee has been all over that play. They've run it about three times and gotten about a total of minus one yard. That's, if that's a total. What that is is that's good, a negative good total. preparation by the coaches. Illegal block in the back. Number 72 on the offense. 
half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Now, now think about how this play changes the field position. Pat, think about the last couple of plays. You had third and 20. Middle picks up the first down deep in their own territory. They get the long punt by Colby Smith. Now this penalty, and even though they haven't scored, Middle has won the first battle here in the second half. It puts Vanderbilt in the shadows of their own goalpost. And the penalty also forces them into a first and 18. Cutler 13 out of 21 in the first half for a little more than 100 yards. He calls his own number and didn't get very far doing it. May have gotten what a yard. Yeah, if I'm going to call the, if that if I'm going to call my own number, I'm going to call it away from the two defensive tackles from Middle Tennessee, Staten and Little John. Get away from those guys. Those guys are too hefty hefties. For those of you who have not seen MTSU before, Pat and I got the chance to work the MTSU Alabama game in Tuscaloosa Labor Day weekend. We're not nearly as surprised by MTSU's defensive effort. For 30 minutes against Alabama, they showed some of this. Right, and they are just, they're tenacious. Uh, their defense is pretty darn good. Five wide receivers set. They'll throw the wide receiver screen, and Bennett looks to the outside, gets a little bit of yardage, and then got bumped out by Jeremiah Weaver. He'll get about, let's call it six, and Vandy will be forced into third and 12. They like Bennett because he can make you miss. And this is a pretty simple play to try to get a little bit of yardage. And there's not much there, but watch what Bennett does. He's able to pull the spin move to the outside and get about four extra yards and maybe give him a prayer I'm, getting this next I'm going to say this. He makes something out of nothing right there. That's, that's, a, that's a football player, a guy that can make stuff happen on his own. He just did right there. Bennett's a freshman out of Birmingham who has stepped into Kind of a complimentary role in their wide receiver package and done quite well for Vandy. They need 13 on third down. Cutler with time down the middle, caught by Marlon White for a first down. The offensive line gave him the time. He threw a 15 yard strike to Marlon White. A rope and a fantastic catch by Marlon White. All year long, we've been saying it. They love to go to that play on third and long. They've been very successful picking it up. Even though the safety sat on that route and that's the play that Harris intercepted on earlier. They went right back to it. Watch 82 at the top of your screen. Just going to square in right at the ch right at the chains and make the catch. Harris has good coverage. That's just a, a rope and a, and a great grab. White had 14 catches coming in two tonight and that was a huge one right there. His third of the evening to keep Vanderbilt's drive alive. Cutler again his own number and Dennis Burke said You'll get four, but no more than that. Dennis Burke, very active linebacker out of Marietta. We saw a lot of him and called his number a lot that night in Tuscaloosa. He makes a great play because he's working from the weak side spot and tracks him down the line. He knows he's got cutback. He's got cutback. He's got cutback. Here comes the cutback. That's my tackle. Nice play. You think he said all that? <laughs> uh, he's probably you in know, his head. Hey, I'm not going to kid you. I used to think that I got this as a, you know as I'm running down the line. Just don't say it. You waste energy. Come yeah. on. Does it not all you say it in your head? Kind of bungle up though at some point. A lot of times you you know you're just chomping at the bit that you can catch a guy off his pegs. Second and six, and they run Jackson Garrison for very short yardage to the 34. And middle has done a pretty nice job against Vandy's run. That play right there is what we saw down in Alabama. You go back, they came back with that cutback. This time, Burke stays home. Now, right here, if I can play offensive coordinator, which I am not, or amateur offensive coordinator, I think this is a play where on the field, you can take a shot down the field. You know middle has been sitting on those short routes. They like to go slant here on third and three or four. This is one where you might work the double move and hit something big. By the way, you didn't need anybody's permission to do it. Armchair quarterback. I don't know what you call, but that didn't. Five wide receivers set. They'll throw the wide receiver screen, and Bennett looks to the outside, gets a little bit of yardage, and then got bumped out by Jeremiah Weaver. He'll get about, let's call it six, 
and Vandy will be forced into third and 12. They like Bennett because he can make you miss, and this is a pretty simple play to try to get a little bit of yardage, and there's not much there, but watch what Bennett does. He's able to pull the spin move to the outside and get about four extra yards and maybe give him a prayer I'm, getting this next I'm gonna say this, he makes something out of nothing right there. That's, that's, a, that's a football player, a guy that can make stuff happen on his own. He just did right there. Bennett's a freshman out of Birmingham who has stepped into kind of a complimentary role in their wide receiver package and done quite well for Vandy. They need 13 on third down. Cutler with time down the middle caught by Marlon White for a first down. The offensive line gave him the time. He threw a 15 yard strike to Marlon White. A rope and a fantastic catch by Marlon White. All year long, we've been saying it. They love to go to that play on third and long. They've been very successful picking it up, even though the safety sat on that route, and that's the play that Harris intercepted on earlier. They went right back to it. Watch 82 at the top of your screen. Just going to square in right at the ch right at the chains and make the catch. Harris has good coverage. That's just a, a rope and a, and a great grab. White had 14 catches coming in two tonight, and that was a huge one right there. His third of the evening to keep Vanderbilt's drive alive. Cutler. Again, his own number, and Dennis Burke said, you'll get four, but no more than that. Dennis Burke, very active linebacker out of Marietta. We saw a lot of him and called his number a lot that night in Tuscaloosa. He makes a great play because he's working from the weak side spot and tracks him down the line. He knows he's got cutback, he's got cutback, he's got cutback. Here comes the cutback, that's my tackle. Nice play. You think he said all that? <laughs> uh, he's probably, you in know, his head. hey, I'm not going to kid you. I used to think that I got this, as a, you know, as I'm running down the line. Just don't say it. You waste energy. Come yeah. on. Does it not all you say it in your head? Kind of bungle up, though, at head. some point. A lot of times, you you know, you're just chomping at the bit that you can catch a guy off his pegs. Second and six. And they run Jackson Garrison for very short yardage to the 34. And middle has done a pretty nice job against Vandy's run. That play right there is what we saw down in Alabama. You go back, they came back with that cutback. This time, Burke stays home. Now, right here, if I can play offensive coordinator, which I am not, or amateur offensive coordinator, I think this is a play where on the field, you can take a shot down the field. You know middle has been sitting on those short routes. They like to go slant here on third and three or four. This is one where you might work the double move and hit something big. By the way, you didn't need anybody's permission to do it. Armchair quarterback. I don't know what you call, but that did not get it done. MTSU's linebackers, 43, hey. was the first one in there. And that is Eric Walden, who made a nice play, and he's not a uh, linebacker, he's a defensive How about end. J.K. Sab on the blitz comes flying through number 25 and disrupts the play from the instant, and then Walden finishes it up. Excellent football play, great discipline by the defense. They are starting to take away a lot of Vanderbilt's run options. Watch, watch Sab here come through. You see him on the blitz, forces Cutler to cut back. There's Walden finishing it off. What a play by Sab. Hanfelt with a very good kick. Wow. Robinson from his 23. Crowd wanted a marker, there it is. This one's gonna come back, oh. although Robinson is gonna get good yardage to the Vanderbilt 48, but there are flags all over the place. Hey, pick up your teeth, because I'm gonna say this, Reggie Doucette um, <laughs> gave a collect call from China. Well, this is what we like to say. He knocked him off his pins, and that's not an easy guy to do it to. It was Ooh. Jonathan Goff. He caught him Man. not seeing it, and this one will be coming back. Here's the penalty right there. The you're gonna see the left-hand side of your Watch screen. Watch number 27. It's not You'll here. You'll see him coming up right here, watch this. Oh! oh! Oh my goodness. That was not the illegal block. No, that was the legal block. That was legal. It was something on the other Senior side that was illegal. From the spot of the foul, first and ten. Well, it kind of pushes the field position all the way back on middle right, side. Instead of being at midfield, now you're inside your own 20. Eight minutes into the third quarter, it's the same as it was at halftime. MTSU by eight. Frank Wycheck here at Rivergate Toyota. It's the $4,000 guaranteed trade-in this week only.
Don't spend any more money repairing your old car. Come today to Rivergate Toyota and get $4,000 guaranteed trade-in on any used car in stock. The $4,000 guaranteed trade only at Rivergate Toyota. Push it in, pull it in, drag it in. Rivergate Toyota, your Toyota source. So come on in and see my good friends at Rivergate Toyota. Need your contractor's license to get the best jobs? More and more, people are hiring only licensed contractors. Get your license now. American Contractors Exam Services is now offering their seminar here with their no pass, no pay guarantee. Commercial, residential, electrical, and mechanical trades, all exam areas are covered. Call now for information on the next class, the no pass, no pay seminar. 1-800-992-1910. 1-800-992-1910. If you don't know Nashville has a new radio station, then you don't know Jack. 96.3 Jack FM, playing what we want. Breaking the ice with a new client can be difficult. But sometimes, the ice is the best way to break in a new client. He scores! And the Predators take a one Get your next client to a Predators game and ice the deal with our new all-inclusive business package, including free food and beverage for the entire game. The Nashville Predators, we're back, and we mean business. It's go time. Listen closely. Football is a collision sport. <laughs> now, why is it a collect call from China, Pat? Couldn't it be from New Zealand or someplace some like that? No, those local calls are soft rings, and that's a collect call from a far distance, and that is a loud ring. Marks on first down, screens it out, but Vanderbilt was ready. Sharon Thompson out of Atlanta read that play light nicely for no gain. Good discipline by this Vandy defense, and Thompson jumps him right away. Amy, what do you got downstairs for us? George, I was talking to Coach Johnson on the way out, and I asked him if this was the same mentality they had to have against Arkansas and Wake Forest. Those are two games they started the season where they both had to come back, and he said yes, but he thought this was more important because of what's at stake, this 5-0 and and plus Middle Tennessee being right down the road. George, back to you. Second down and 10, and they run with Eugene Gross. He needs a block from his quarterback, and he got a little bit of that, made something out of nothing from the 17 to the 22. When the play started, it looked like a disaster. I still like the play call. I, I think you gotta keep, you gotta force feed the running game to keep the balance. I like the play call. And now, you've got Gross again, making something or nothing, going into the pile. Remember the touchdown run he had was similar. He went into the middle of the line, nothing was there, then bounced it outside. And he got some positive yardage. Active crowd tonight here in Nashville, and a lot of them Rise to their feet again. MTSU needs about five to keep this drive going. Vanderbilt shows blitz. Marks delivers a strike that is ruled incomplete. It may have bounced to his favorite receiver of the night, Bobby Williams. That time, maybe the pressure worked. Yeah, well, the pressure was in his face, and a lot of times quarterbacks feel it. It's a nice pickup by Gross, but hey, he felt it coming and delivered it a little bit short. And it was there that would have moved the chains. A nice call by Middle Tennessee because that's exactly what they wanted to do. But once again, Vanderbilt plays soft and just allows you to make the play or not make the play. First read. Both Colby Smith and Bryant Honfelt, the two punters, have been very busy tonight, and both of them have done a nice job. This is an absolute bomb. Bennett from his 26. Bennett with some good yardage and a late marker that likely will nullify the 15-yard return. Right, and instead of being at the 40-yard line, almost to midfield, you're going to be uh, at about your own 20. Big field position play. But it goes back to what you said. You, you told me before the game, I like this Bennett kid. He has a spark to him. He can make some things happen. I mean, tell me more. During the return, illegal block in the back, number nine of the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 
First and ten. Ronnie Swoops picks up the penalty, and that is a big one because it's about a 25-yard swing in the field position. We go to a timeout. 5:23 to play. It's been a scoreless third quarter. MTSU still leads by eight. I thought you were getting hors d'oeuvres. It's game time, baby. Come on now. That's a double quarter pounder. With cheese. Samantha wanted hors d'oeuvres. The double quarter pounder with cheese. Pound one. Hors d'oeuvres. Yes. And this is what I had in mind when I thought about mm -hmm. cheese. The following is an Electric Power Company's update. Here are estimates from the Department of Energy. Natural gas prices up 46%, propane up 24%, electric rates increase only 8%. More in this team report. Sharon, that's because Tennessee has the fourth lowest electric rates in the country. And Chuck, does that translate into energy savings? Sure, electric heat pumps cost less to operate than gas systems while providing year-round comfort. Thanks, Chuck. Middle Tennessee Electric, using electricity efficiently. It's the final days of Chrysler Employee Pricing Plus. Hurry in now for the best selection of remaining 05s. They're going fast, so get to your Chrysler dealer today for employee pricing plus cash allowance on Town & Country, PT Cruiser, and Crossfire Limited. All with our employee pricing plus a combined cash allowance of up to $3,000 on select models. Hurry in while supplies last. Don't miss out. Visit your Chrysler dealer today or visit Chrysler.com slash clearance. Gotta do something about this fence. Guess I better go get the tiny lassos. It's not the same old West at Longhorn Steakhouse. Try our Flo's Filet and Lobster Tail served with melted butter. Longhorn Steakhouse, there's a new West in town. Well, there's a group that's looking for Vanderbilt to go 5-0, and oh, but there's a huge contingent over on the other side of this field, the MTSU Blue Raider Bunch and Andy McCullum's team saying, not so fast, my friend. They have played almost a mistake-free game, and that is so different from what has happened to them coming in. They have cleaned up all the mistakes in this bye week they've had. Cutler will throw on first down, and he fires a strike to Eric Davis to the 30. They'll get eight yards on first down. Guys, one of the things that, that I want to throw out there, has MTSU almost taken Vandy's running game away? A little bit, it, and it's scary because Jonathan Bonner, one of their key linebackers, has, was in the locker room a little bit ago, and I just seen him trot back out, so don't be surprised if he gets back on the field. Once again, a lot of white shirts around that ball. This but Cutler one, puts it right in there. They're doing a good job of swarming, and you're right. Cutler has no fear. They have shown the best ability to me to read Vanderbilt's scheme. Vanderbilt has had a lot of guys out scheming teams up to this point in the year, but Middle has been very smart. Cutler this time gives to his tailback, and Jackson Garrison, as soon as I said they'd taken the running game away, they said not so fast for 19. And look who comes trotting on the field, Jonathan Bonner, who was in the locker room just a little while ago. He was hurt. Back out there, he's their run stopper. He flies around the field in his place. Uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. They better get him back on the field. And Garrison is able to bounce it outside there. He popped two very long runs against Richmond on that play last week. Willie, until that play, MTSU had limited Vanderbilt's tailbacks to 13 carries, 37 yards. That one good for the first down. They may run the reverse, and Bennett has got a lot of room. Bennett inside the MTSU 40. Excellent play call for 13. Well-designed play call. The action moved so fast to the left side of the field that when Bennett came back across the grain, he was watching right here. Watch the action. Watch everybody hustling to get involved in the play. Last line of defense is that defensive end. He's got no chance. If he gets one block there by the receiver, that's going to the house. The first team I ever saw do that was the Georgia Bulldogs when they had Herschel Walker. He used to love to run that option. Everybody be looking for Herschel on the pitch, and then boom, they'd bring that guy through there. And once again, they find a way to get Earl Bennett the ball in the open field. He's their best open field runner. They got 13, and Roy Polite 
was about the only line of defense between a huge game and that tackle. Cutler throwing deep, and he's got a man out there, but he overshoots Davis at the goal line. And again, that's the first time that I can remember, Pat, that they really stretched the defense. Right, and I, I think they need to take more shots down the field to get those linebackers out of there. Watch this. Here's Davis, little stop and go, little smoke route, they call that, where, you know, trying to burn them. And a tell good you job what, Damon, by the safety yeah. to come over. Damon Nixon did a nice job in helping his partner out there. I'll tell you what, the defensive backfield was the biggest question mark and really has been since Andy McCollum took over. He's been really fighting to try to get some defensive backs. I've been very impressed with them tonight. They've hung tough. They've done a nice Vanderbilt job. Receiving court. And Vanderbilt no goes back to Chris Nixon at quarterback. Cutler sprinted way out left. Nixon showing nimble feet. Got 12 and a first down. Okay, Pat, Vanderbilt showed MTSU that formation about three different times in the first half. Why did it work there? Oh, just a simple fact, great athlete running the ball. Gets a nice block from his guard who pulls over. Big play, creates a scene. There they go. One of the guys that's missing in the MTSU secondary right now is Bradley Robinson, their starting cornerback. He's out and pull lights in, in his place. It was Ryan King, the senior, who came across to make the block to free up Chris Nixon on that play. Two and a half minute drive that Vanderbilt's working on right now. Jackson Garrison short yardage only to the 24 before Quentin Staten brought him down. Quentin Staten was an offensive lineman until right. this year. Pretty interesting thing. I, I wonder if uh, anybody took note of that in, in leagues that play uh, players play both ways. <laughs> what, did, what did he mean by that? He was a, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> no, I, I think he's, you know, he's a, he's a good football player. He's all Sunbelt Conference as a guard, and now he's doing a fine job on defense. I thought it was a little cheesy on your part to try to work him out before the game. <laughs> I was signing him. Him and Griffin. Second and nine is the play call. Cutler a play fake and down the middle oh. Davis got clobbered at the 10 and again it was Damon Nixon who absolutely put the leather to Eric Davis. I'm sorry about the emotion George but golly I saw that one coming from a distance right here watch this watch Nixon he's a free safety one free again hello and that's what you do you take him right hey you if he's going to catch it you're going to make him pay a dear price. Look at that, that's right at the hip. Nice job. Another good read. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with the safeties in the middle. They have done a nice job of being in the right place, and now they're going to call the timeout. Right, and Robinson's back on the field now, too. So a couple guys get dinged up. Bonner, Robinson, back on the field they are now. We'll keep it right here with 2.57 to play in the third and period. A, and a big play coming up. Third Gigantic. down. Well, let me say this. When I see that play, I know why Willie chose basketball. Smart. <laughs> Holy cow. That's smart. Eric Davis was quite a high school basketball player. They got deep into the state tournament right, when he's El Harding. He's Harding. And of right. course, uh, they won the state tournament when he was, I'm not sorry, the, uh, the Blue Cross Bowl championship right. when he was a senior on the football team. And they had a really good team. He's a, he's a really good receiver. I'll tell you what else, he's two catches away from going into the top 10 all time at Vanderbilt. I bring that up because in the early 80s, you'll find several players on that list. When Watson Brown was their offensive coordinator, it was a pass 75, 80% of the time offense for a couple of years. And speaking of all of that, 1984, their last 4-0 start, the bugaboo that year was Tulane. And some people have been reading all that this week. Well, uh, this is a, you know, this is a big drive right here. If they want to go to 5 and 0, oh, they got to try to convert this drive. This has been the kind of play. And again, this is a new play. So it, it doesn't mean the history is going to repeat itself, but this is the kind of play that Vanderbilt has been able to pull out. I mean, they, they've had the ball, they've had the yardage gain, but you know what that tells you though is the field position and the few right. mistakes Middle has made has really forced Vanderbilt to drive the whole field. And, and this is where Middle has been the better team in the Shoney's red zone. And this is in the oh oh, but we're not officially even in though that we're not quite oh, no, we're not yes. quite there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Cutler needs about 10, has all day, uh -oh. and throws it away. It looked like Actually, he and his receiver were not on the same page you're on that exactly one. Exactly right, George. That's a misread. Cutler reads fade, the receiver reads post. 
So now Brian Honfeld, who hit earlier tonight from 42, will be asked to do exactly that again. And this will be a this will be a nice little poke here. Now I'm looking at the flag in the open end because it's trickier to kick to the open end, in my opinion, in this stadium. But he's got the wind at his back. He's pulling a little bit to the to left. Distance is no problem. Accuracy is there, and Vanderbilt back on the board. Middle's defense stiffens. The Commodores get three, and we'll get a timeout with 2:47 to play in the third quarter. And suddenly the margin is five. Boy, you talk about dead center. That was clutch he's, right there. He's a good kicker. I'm telling you, he's, he's got all that points right now. And, and the sad thing, if you're Vanderbilt, you got to get a, a little sense of frustration where you're going up and down the field, you're dominating the clock, and you can't put a touchdown on the board. If you're MTSU, you get a score here, this game might be over. Pat, what do you think they're doing so well in the red zone to keep Vandy out of the end zone? They're just hunkering down and playing enough man and one free to frustrate Cutler and his receivers. Again, it comes down to execution as well. You saw the, the miscommunication between Bennett and Cutler. Earlier in the game, Marlon White dropped the ball. There was another play where right. the throw was behind. So sometimes you just put your guys in the right position you force the other team to make a play and this is another testament to to mtsu's coaching staff had the extra week to prepare i'm sure they pumped out as much video as they could and it's a credit to the kids to because of how much they've watched the video Honfeld drives st teal about six yards deep by the way if you've liked this action tonight these two teams scheduled to play on the thursday night before labor day next year and then it's very much up in the air we talked with uh, officials from both schools at halftime i think there's a chance but it may be a while well i, I think it'll be a shame if these don't these two teams don't have a consistent rivalry year after year one of the issues is vanderbilt's schedule they have had uh, their schedule pretty much filled until 2010 so we're gonna have to wait a little bit regardless Middle starts from its 20 and they'll run Eugene Gross and he got only a couple before the middle linebacker Jonathan Goff plugged up the hole. Now we saw that rushing stat and that skewed a little bit because remember in college a sack counts right. negative rushing yards and there was that uh, there's been a couple of pitches that they had to just basically go fall on so they've been a little bit more effective than that and they've had about four sacks already so I mean really they've gotten after marks when he's been back there. Marks will throw on second and eight. Oh, no, he and won't. No, he won't. Vanderbilt's defense got in there. The sack credited. That's, that's Chris Booker again. That is again. Chris Booker. I apologize I'm telling for you, he, so is, he has been all over the field. Watch him again. Inside move. Keep driving your feet. Good job, Chris. Works right to the quarterback. Another sack, and that, that's going to take away the rushing yards. A little bit of a coverage sack, though, too. Absolutely. Yes. But credit Chris Booker. Here's a guy that is a, is a senior. Worked back from a serious knee injury to get on the field. He's got one of those motors, kind of the Kyle Vandenbosch if you're a Titans fan. I'll tell you what, this is as much noise as I have heard here in a long time. Third and 15, marks to the air. Down the middle, it's complete but short, and now they say incomplete to St. Teal at the 27. Vanderbilt's defense gets a three and out, and that brings a bunch of these folks to their feet. Once again, Vanderbilt allows the catch just short of the chains, but St. Teal can't come up with it. That's uncharacteristic of him. That's exactly what they want there if you're middle, your best run after catch guy with a chance to break one on one and maybe have a big play, and he didn't come up with it. Right, and now you're gonna see Vanderbilt with, with a great chance to give themselves a short field here. Earl Bennett standing at the Vanderbilt 45 as Smith hit another beauty. Bennett from his 42 gets to the outside, needs a block and gets it, and gets to the MTSU 43. Frankly, the hang time was very good. Bennett got one block to the corner. Well, if we get a chance to see this, by the way, this will be by far Vanderbilt's best field position of the game. Their best field position previously was 35, their own 35-yard line. Now watch Bennett. He'll suck in the coverage. He'll take two steps in. Now watch the wall developing at the top of your screen. 
He sucks the two guys in, now bounces it outside. Now watch the wall he's going to get on the far side there to be able to kick it upfield and get into middle territory. I think you're right about him. This kid's got a little bit of electricity in him. He can, he can spark a team up without question, and, and you see it right there. Vandy opens with Cutler as a wide receiver and freshman Chris Nixon for the moment running the offense and they find a good gash on first down Jennings to the middle 37 and Jonathan Bonner the middle linebacker brings him down I'm counting and, and I can't swear to this that's the fifth play they've tried that tonight and, and I think it's 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 not a bad idea because you're getting another running threat in the backfield and you don't have to take a pounding on your quarterback that's got to throw it a bunch do they ever throw to Cutler in this maybe inside of a minute to play in the third quarter second and five Jennings found very tough sledding, and I'll tell you why. Little John at 318 said to Jennings at about 220, you're going nowhere. That's got to be an oxymoron. Little John. <laughs> yes. How about Big John right there? Look, at 318, how about Big Sir? Oh, my gosh. Final play of the third period, 45 minutes in the books, and this one is nowhere near finished. A great final 15 minutes is coming from Dudley Field in Nashville. It's MTSU 14, Vanderbilt 9. You're watching on UPN 30. Oh, it's Billy Dean calling from the Opry. Hey, we just dropped off your favorite purity ice cream flavors to the dressing room. What? It's not there. No uh, moose tracks? No Nutty Buddy. Weird. We can bring you some more. Huh. <laughs> Works every time, Billy. Right on, Tater. <laughs> Good stuff. Tell you what, you can eat. Southern Home Builders, traditional living with modern appeal. Greg has trouble getting up for breakfast, but today he's in for a treat. Because right now at Jack in the Box, he can try my new ciabatta breakfast sandwich. Lightly toasted ciabatta bread stacked with black forest ham, bacon, eggs, melting cheese, and hollandaise sauce. Welcome to Jack in the Box. <laughs> Whoa, Greg, put some jammies on. The BMW 5 Series with active steering. It handles so well, it's like riding on rails. Experience the pure joy of driving today. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Willie, you've got the stat of the night. Let's hear it. Well, this has been the story of Vanderbilt's season going into the fourth quarter. Vanderbilt last year miserable in the fourth quarter. About as bad as you can be. And at one time, it was 78-7 to going into the last game against Tennessee. This year, it's been the flip-flop. They had a huge fourth quarter comeback against Wake Forest. They came back from two scores down against Arkansas. And they have been behind in all four games. So they have been able to find something a lot different mentally and physically to be able to play well in the fourth quarter. But it's a brand new ball game. Don't tell me Middle's not happy to be up 14-9 at this point. Fun football game to watch through three periods. Vanderbilt needs a short five to keep the chains moving. And they're not able to convert. Excellent coverage by Bradley Robinson. And then about 10 minutes after the fact, a flag comes flying. Well, Robinson has been just like glue on the Vanderbilt receivers. He was right up on them, and it almost seemed like the crowd coaxed them into that flag. That's about as late as a flag as you're going to see. I don't know about that flag. Pass interference, wow. number 20 on the defense. The penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. 
Automatic first down. This is close. This is very close. I want to see this again. I hope. Well, let's take a look. Critical call at a crucial part in the game. Well, Hard it, to looks tell. Like, it looks like he had his left arm on the receiver. I, I, I'm going to go along with the official. Here. I agree, Pat. That's what I saw. The left hand, it wasn't the right hand. But if I'm Andy McCullum, I'm furious that that flag came in about 15 minutes late. Right. Vanderbilt with the first down from the middle 35. Cutler looking down the middle. Davis could not find the handle at the MTSU 6. He had to make just a little bit of an adjustment to the ball as Cutler was thrown on the run. He floated it down the middle, and he got two hands on it, and he has been coming up with catches like this, but this is almost a changeup from a, Cutler. That, that's a hard throw to make right there. He makes a pretty fantastic throw, falling off to his right, and he just, just, I mean, watch this throw right here. That's a tough throw, even to get it that far out there. That's pretty impressive. And Davis, yeah, he just can't come up with it. Second big drop by... A tandem of receivers that has come up big all year long. If you asked Eric, Eric Davis, he'd tell you that he's got to catch that football. Cutler swings oh. this one out, and that one is dropped. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, a core of receivers that have been so good to Jay Cutler this year have kind of betrayed it. What a mismatch, though. You have Dennis Burke trying to catch the back coming out of the backfield. That's going to be a big gainer right there. Look at it. He's got nothing in front of him. It brings back flashbacks uh, to the 2000 game. Mezzi Hazanoglu dropped a sure touchdown that would have put Vanderbilt ahead that's late in that of game. Glue, right? <laughs> Not on that particular play. So everybody just had an awful flashback in the black and gold section of the stands tonight. Wow. Third and ten. Middle showing three-man rush but threatening blitz. They bring some people. Nobody Cutler there. with plenty of time, and he shoots a strike to Bennett, who does hold on. 16 and a first down at the MTSU 19. Now, this was a hard sinker ball right here. We saw the throw on the run where he put the touch on it. Watch Bennett go down and get this one. This is a difficult pass to catch here, Pat, because this is coming in with some hair on it. Hey, remember this. He's a righty moving to his left making that throw. That's pretty impressive. It looked to me like Cutler was saying, do I tuck it because he had some right. room or do I throw it? He made the right decision. Decision. Bennett, the freshman, playing a big role tonight. So Vanderbilt now in the Shoney's red zone, 19 yards away from the lead. Cutler finds Bennett, and he goes down at the 14. When the knee hits the ground on the college level, that's where you officially go down. Let's go down to the sideline. Amy, what have you got for us? George, Coach Bobby Johnson just came over to his defense and told them to get ready. They are scoring on this drive, and he wants his defense to get out there and hold that ball. It becomes all about emotion at this part of the game. This is when you rev it up. Bobby Johnson's a pretty even-keeled guy. He picks his spots when he wants to rev guys up. And this is a nice drive. Cutler, again, will be a receiver to the far left at the top of your screen. Chris Nixon for the sixth time tonight will run it himself. And Nixon down at the 17. There were about four Blue Raiders. J.K. Sab was the first, and they drop him for a loss of three. I'm going to tell you what's going on. They went in at halftime. They said, hey, if they line up in this formation, these are the plays that they've run so far. Finally, this time, they sniff it out, and they get it for a stop and a loss. Vanderbilt showing a lot of confidence in that set that they haven't run all year long with a redshirt freshman. Now this would be, this would be in the Shoney's red zone. And this has been the story of the game so far. Middle Tennessee's ability to stop Vanderbilt in this area of the field. They need seven to keep the drive going. They also need seven to get the lead. Cutler to the end zone for Davis. Touchdown! We had to wait until the official went to the corner, and Willie, there was very little margin for error on the throw. And what a job by Davis, but look at Andy McCollum. He's pointing up to the press box. He wants them to take a look at this one. With replay, you can bet, Pat, they're going to check on it. Watch this. This is a nice corner route right here by Davis. Let's see if he's got it. Got it. 
Toe was in. I think he had it. It's close. Let Let goes, I think he's got it too. Let me tell you. There's just a little juggle. Watch this. He gets the hands. Little juggle. Has it. Toe still on the ground. They'll look at it for sure. It's awfully close. I guess they won't. Uh, surprising that they're not going to look at it. And Vanderbilt is going to go for two after taking the lead. I am absolutely shocked that the officials have not buzzed upstairs. They don't Too take a look now. at it. And Cutler gets the two. Oh, he does not. The two-point conversion fails. Davis may have gotten that one stripped away by Burke. But Vanderbilt does score to take a 15-14 lead. I'm going to tell you right now, Jay Cutler might be one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the entire country. When we come back, we'll talk a little instant replay and why it wasn't used. Vanderbilt now leads by one. Join George, Willie, and Darren weekday afternoons for the Sports Zone on 104.5 The Zone. The Simpsons, weeknights at 9 on UPN 30. Hank Hill. I've got a sense of humor. I laugh at Tony Danza. One very simple man. I look like a jackass. <laughs> Keeping it simple five times a week. King of the Hill. Weeknights at 930 on UPN 30. Planning a vacation or a business trip? Is your car in the shop? Access Car Rental has the guaranteed lowest rates and free customer pickup. From fully equipped cars, vans, SUVs, and trucks, we meet your transportation needs. Weekend rates starting at just $14.99 per day. Call today or check online for more great rates. 36 convenient locations so we're close to you. Access Car Rental, your access to savings. Cruising the highways, blazing through the trails, or hauling that load. Choose your ride at America's Motorsports. Only America's Motorsports has it all. Honda, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Polaris, and Sea-Doo. New or used. Motorcycles, ATVs, and watercraft. Plus three locations. Knowles Road, Myatt Drive, and in Dixon. Want the largest selection and great prices? Only one place. America's Motorsports. Knowles Road, Myatt Drive, just East Rivergate Mall, and in Dixon. Nashville has a new radio station, then you don't know Jack. 96.3 Jack FM, playing what we want. Well, this game has lived up to all of its pre-hype billing, I guess you would say. 15 to 14 Vanderbilt after the touchdown drive with the short field. Bryant Honfeld gets the signal from Steve Shaw. This one, Santiel Wilfield at his three. Santiel out to the 20, and Vanderbilt special teams do a good job, that time led by Jason Burns. Now, Pat, I do believe they got the call right for the touchdown, but for the life of me, if you're going to have instant replay, you got to use it on that play. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I think the officials might have take, taken a peek at it, but I, I personally, I don't think it was, there's any doubt that was a touchdown. Well, that is true, Pat. You make a good point. They looked at it. They just didn't, they right. didn't feel they like didn't it was warrant taking an extra look at right, it. More time. Now, you guys know this is the first time I've gotten the chance to see Vanderbilt this year. This is as loud as I have heard this place in years. MTSU with only one first down in the second half, and Clint Marks has to burn a timeout. Now, you, you hit on it, George. When is the last time a Vanderbilt crowd forced <laughs> a quarterback to take a timeout because of noise? That's a, that's a tip of the hat to the crowd tonight. Well, only, Willie, only one left now for the Blue Raiders. I got the chance to watch the Ole Miss game down in Atlanta, and I knew that it was different and it was better. But I've got to tell you, guys, this is a game that's got to be played more. 
football in the Middle Tennessee area deserves this game. Well, my, my thinking is not only does it benefit does it benefit Vanderbilt, benefit Middle Tennessee, but what's going to happen is it's going to strengthen it's going to strengthen all recruiting in the state of Tennessee, whether it be Knoxville, whether it be Middle Tennessee, or whether it be Vanderbilt. I think more kids will see this type of rivalry and say, hey, I want to be a part of that rivalry too. Here's the other argument. There are probably people tonight who have never come to see either of these teams right. who are watching this game this evening. Vanderbilt better than two to one in total offense, but the scoreboard says nip and tuck. Marks a good play fake. He's going deep and he overshoots Bobby Williams by about six yards. It was Andrew Pace, the nearest Commodore defender. I'm gonna tell you right now, the side judge is gonna get an earful from Andy McCollum. I, I can guarantee you he's following him and he's gonna give him an earful. And the reason why, that should have been pass interference right there. I thought so too. Andrew Pace kind of just nudged him, just impeded the body progress just a tad on the double move. You can't cut off like that. And watch what he does. You'll see it right here up the right sideline. Watch the right side of your screen. Williams is going up the field. There's a nudge coming up. I don't know if we can get it. It's before that. You cannot cut him off like that. Second down and 10. Middle with 21 yards in the second half, and Gross may have added one, but no more than that. I saw Kevin Joyce and also Chris Booker, who's been very active in the second half. Huge third down conversion for Middle. Well, Sevigy also coming in there on the pile, and add one more guy to your list. It was Curtis Gatewood coming in down low. Well, no, that was Booker. I'll tell you what, he has really he's come had, up big he's in had this a half. Of a game. He has made a bunch of big plays tonight. And he's been very impressive. I, I I like the other defensive end. Right now, Booker's out, outplayed him. Marks has been looking for Robinson all night long. Don't be surprised if he throws to him here. Play clock is down to three, and Marks steps up and goes long ball again for St. Teal, but it's incomplete. Vanderbilt's coverage, a Hanajai and it's three and out for middle. We have not seen Kalechi Ahanaja in the game a whole lot tonight. He is their most experienced, most athletic defensive back, and right there, he played the ball pretty well. That's, that's nice pressure right there by the defensive line, forcing Marks to move out of the pocket and maybe not set his feet to make that throw. Boy, he looked like an outfielder that was backing up and drifting with and a fly ball, almost tripped. We did, we did the Rutgers Vanderbilt game last year, and I told you how much I liked him as a safety. Colby Smith with another fine kick. Bennett telling his teammates, get away from it. It'll finally stop at the 27. How big has Colby Smith been punting the ball tonight for the Blue Raiders? This one is as tough and tight as it can get. From nearly sold out Vanderbilt Stadium, Commodores by one. Have you decided? Sirloin steak fingers. Whoa, Nelly! Barry, you just ordered yourself a Shoney's value basket. What's your game plan? Well, I ordered the sirloin steak fingers, Keith. I'm gonna eat them. Sounds good. What about defense? Huh? You gotta be ready. This lineup brings five great All-American baskets to the table. I'm ready, Keith. I'm ready! From burgers to chicken fingers, these value baskets are ready to be gobbled up. All for just $5.99. Hurry, because just like football season, they'll go away fast. For great food at a great price, it's down, set, Shoney. <laughs> Just when you need it most, Rivergate Toyota's certified used vehicles get more warranty. Now, every certified used Toyota carries a three-month, 3,000-mile comprehensive warranty. Plus, other warranties are now extended to seven years. Rivergate Toyota stands behind every certified used Toyota. Remember, the best new cars make the best used cars. Fuel efficient, warranty, and priced right. Toyota, moving forward. So come on in and see my good friends at Rivergate Toyota. Do you remember? This Nashville crowd makes as much noise as anyone in the National Hockey League, and they're about it right now. The sound. This place is rocking big time. Of the game. It scores! The first playoff goal in Nashville's history. It's go time. He scores! No! He scores! No! Oh, mercy! Call 615-770-PUCK today. 
need your contractor's license to get the best jobs. More and more, people are hiring only licensed contractors. Get your license now. American Contractors Exam Services is now offering their seminar here with their no pass, no pay guarantee. Commercial, residential, electrical, and mechanical trades, all exam areas are covered. Call now for information on the next class, the no pass, no pay seminar, 1-800-992-1910. 1-800-992-1910. Yep, this is... Well, during the timeout, this was probably as loud as I have ever heard this stadium from a Vanderbilt fan perspective. I, I've got to go back to the 82 year to say that I have heard anything quite like what I heard during that timeout. It really is electric. You look like you were in shock. I, I was totally stunned. It has been forever since I've heard anything like that. Vanderbilt from its own 29. They'll try to run and hurtling over the pile and getting pretty good yardage was Jackson Garrison. Devarick Scandrett tackled him, but not until a gain of six. Just simple toss sweep right here. Watch the lead block by the fullback. Jackson Garrison says, hey, I got to make what I can. And I like the play call, Pat, because you have to power the football at this point in the game. They have controlled the clock, really. They've had the ball a lot more than MTSU. You want to see if you can just Knock start wearing out. those guys down. Knock them out. Knock them out. Nothing better than playing physical football. Uh -oh. They need a long three, and Jackson Garrison goes down at the 30, and when his knee touched, that effectively ended the play. Let me say that again. It's different than in the pros where you have the opportunity to get back up, but right. not so in college. And this is a big miscue yeah, here. Same toss sweep. You know, it's a tough toss. You know, I, I think the toss is a little bit behind him to be truthful, and, but still Garrison's got to catch that and run. That cannot happen in that situation, and that changes this third down coming up. Now those MTSU guys on the sideline trying to rev up their defense to get this big stop. And Bobby Johnson wondering how many big plays are there going to be in this game because there have been a ton of them already. Vanderbilt needs nine. Cutler He's gone. rolls, throws, and that one a little far and off to the left for Marlon White. So MTSU gets I, the three and out they need. Yeah, I think he just threw that away, and that was smart. That's a hey, your defense is playing great. That's a good decision by your quarterback. That's instead of being selfish and trying to trying to thread that in there or drop it in there, just throw it away. Let your defense get back out on the field. You know, really, they've, they've forced MTSU to struggle. Big, big stop for the Raiders there. Now, keep an eye. They like to rush the punter. Does he do anything here? Doesn't appear that they are. They've got double coverage on each of the gunners. Hanfeld. High kick. Robinson from his 36. Ooh. And he was tackled by 36. Andrew Pace on special teams. The hang time was good. Special teams work was good. Yeah, but by both teams tonight they've pretty much I don't want to say this and jinx anybody but I think both teams have been flawless on special teams good field goal kickers good punting units this has been a very clean played game let me ask both of you this MTSU has had the ball four times in the second half they've had to punt on all four what kind of changes do they need to make here they got they got to have one big play one play that sparks them offensively Clint Marks looking over at Andy McCullum's staff for the play call. Throws a swing. This is Teron Henry. Henry got good yardage, and where the spot is, he's about a half yard short of his first down, but great yardage on first down. And, and there's the new look you're looking for, Pat, right. something they have not run yet tonight. And he got a fantastic block by Santiel. I mean, he really made a nice block right there. The little wide receiver screen. Puts middle in great shape. He's got one on one in less than a yard. He's got one on one at the top right here between Williams and, and Pace. On cue, they go to St. Teal, brought down by Josh Allen, but enough yardage for the first down. So middle. It's second first down of the second half. I'm surprised they haven't run that more tonight, Pat. Yeah. And here comes Mr. Pass Rush right here. Booker comes back in the game. Look for him to try to get some heat again on Marks. He's been in his face the whole entire night. Without question, our defensive player of the game. 
clock becoming a factor. We're under 10 minutes to play in a nail biter. Clint Marks to Eugene Gross, and Gross found a gaping hole. 20 yards to the Vanderbilt 32. They throw the ball, they throw the ball. Now all of a sudden they run the draw, works to perfection. Watch this, like the parting of the Red Sea. Well, right there, you see Gross. Nice job by the lineman. They set up pass, show pass, and then, then turn it around. Watch this, show pass. There it is, nice block by the big tackle, number 60, Willie Hall. Another little change of pace. They had not run that play. By far, Middle's best drive of the second half. Marks to the air. Chicola, his big tight end, lumbers to the 23. He's about a half yard short, and Chicola down here deep, you're gonna use him some. Did you see that catch? I mean, he, this kid, I, I think he's underused. I'm telling you, watch this grab by Chicola as he slips out the backside. That's a great grab, one-handed, tucks it away. Then big, strong, tough guy. I like that. Well, I like both these tight ends. A very nice stiff arm at the end of this play. One-hander, nice grab, and a stiff arm. Chicola's third catch of the night, and down here as they approach the Shoney's red zone, they may use him some more. Second and inches, Gross gets the first and down, more. and he gets more to the Vanderbilt 12, and Andrew Pace had to drag him down. Wow, I'm gonna say this right now. This is, where have they been? They've been hiding the whole night with this, these, these type of play calls, and then just the adjustments. I agree with you, Willie, you said it a minute ago. Where has it been? Wide receiver screen, another little slip screen. Tight end play out of the backside. Draw play. I like the play call. Mix it up. The adjustments starting to pay dividends here. Middle from the Vandy 12. And they are officially in the Shoney's red zone. Gross to the corner. And a good open field tackle, even though it was the corner. Andrew Pace has been busy on this drive. It's a gain of only one. Well, I thought that was going to be a holding call on Chicola right there, the tight end. It looked like he had a little handful right there. Bobby Johnson thought it was a holding penalty. He was all over the I side. Agree with, I agree with Coach Johnson. Suddenly, Eugene Gross with some pretty good numbers, about four and a half yards of carry. Funny how one big play can change those stats. <laughs> play clock is down to 10. Marks on second and nine. He and Gross look like they got tangled up, but Gross pushed the pile to about the seven, and this sets up third and five. And I want to go out and I want to say right now, both these coaching staffs need to be commended. We've seen two good football teams battle back and forth, making adjustments the whole night, adjusting their game plans. Very impressive. Coach McCollum's staff, as well as Coach Johnson's staff. And you notice they run the ball to the middle of the field. In case they don't get this third down, they'll have the field goal right down the center. Willie, remember the tight end, Chicola. Third and five. Vandy blitzes. Marks, quarterback draw, comes up short at the five. They'll bring the field goal unit out to try to get the lead. You know, I was hoping they threw it to the tight end because I was going to hit you with the cheap cola. <laughs> <laughs> so they will bring their field goal unit out. Colby Smith is not only a very good punter, but he's a very good place kicker. Forget the fact that he's 0 for 2 this year. Last year, big numbers, and it got him on the uh, Lou Groza watch list. He's been great as a punter tonight as well, so he's got to have some confidence. This is about as short a field goal as you can get. 24 yards, just barely passed an extra point to try to give middle the lead. And a flag thrown. That's going to be a delay of game. Maybe he thought it was too close.
Dead ball, delay of game, number 46 on the offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Now, Pat, on, on first blush, you say, okay, no big deal, five yards, 29-yarder, well within his range. But remember Rivas today in the Michigan game against Michigan can, State. Can I say something? If your kicker's not set and he's not comfortable, take the delay of game. Snap is good. Middle, the two-point lead wow. is Colby Smith. Knocks it dead center, 641 to play, and this one is not over yet. It's MTSU 17, Vanderbilt 15, this nail biter on UPN 30. These are just a few categories from this week's Jeopardy! Brands, Hitchcock, Hard Work. Weeknights at 6 on UPN 30. I dream of Kelly. Da -da. Next Entertainment Tonight, TV faves then and now with Charlie Sheen as Oscar from The Odd Couple. Then, The Odd Couple's Jack Klugman on cancer and losing friend Tony Randall. Plus, Star Jones sends her brother off to war. Next ET. Monday at 6.30 on UPN 30. Stones River Motors in Murfreesboro is having a year-end clearance, so this is the best time to get that new Nissan Altima you've always wanted. Or the great new 2005 Nissan Titan with power to spare at fantastic savings. Or if you've got family, everyone will love the 2005 Nissan Quest. And the Nissan Frontier if you're looking for a pickup that just won't quit. We'll meet you at the bottom line at Stones River Motors on Memorial Boulevard in Murfreesboro. It's good chicken. 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 Ow. No matter how you say it, McDonald's is the place for chicken. Like the all-new line of premium chicken sandwiches, chicken selects, or chicken McNuggets. The choice is yours at McDonald's. melting cheese and hollandaise sauce. Welcome to Jack. Ah! Ah! Whoa, Greg, put some jammies on. Seesaw game that now has Middle Tennessee back up 17-15 thanks to the 29-yard field goal from Colby Smith. What a game this has been. Boy, this has been fun to watch tonight. I'm the uh, I'm the ugly one. That's <laughs> Willie Donick. I'll get out of the way. And that was Pat Sperduto in the corner. They always put me in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty dancing. Obscure 80s movie right there, Pat. Nice job. There's a couple things we need to mention here. I'll tell you what. First of all, let's tip our hat to Andy McCollum and this Blue Raider team. They were down in the dumps. They were making turnovers penalties all over the place in their first three games this has been about as mistake free football as you can play in a hostile environment they have done a tremendous job getting up off the mat and Colby Smith goes alongside of that he had missed two crucial field goals against North Texas comes in and drills that one there and now how big is that two point conversion that Vanderbilt had in their grasp yeah, but didn't get it's huge that one's huge but uh, you know still I'm um, we're talking about one of the best quarterbacks in the country right here number six for the Commodores. Cutler has twice this year led them on late drives. Looking for a third, yep. in some trouble, and he's tackled at the 15. Middle just kept coming, and Sean Mosley finally brought him you, to the turf. You, do you know what play that was? Remember earlier in the game when Marlon White. Right, when Marlon White dropped that ball and he had Dunning open in the short flat. Watch this. This is the exact same play. There's Dunning. Here comes, this time it's Eric Davis on the crosser. And they do a great, again, it goes back to coaching. They saw it. They worked their players. They know about it. They make a big play. And now they've got to get a big chunk of this on second down. They are 15 away from a first down, and the clock is under six minutes. Cutler with time Oof. and that one complete at the 22 and now Steve Shaw comes in and says incomplete 
as it apparently hit the turf. And the umpire has a great view. He turns right now. He sees no holding. His job is to flip around and spot the receiver. He spots the receiver. He sees it short hop, in, hop into the receiver's hands. But still, Cutler can put some mustard on some footballs, can he? It looked like he was very sure that that was a short hop. And now this is a tough, tough third down pickup coming up. And from the end zone view. That's a drop. Yep. Yep. It's on the ground. Tough catch, though. It's tough. One. Right up on, right up along the grass. Cutler needs 15. And he goes left side for White. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Middle gets the three and out that they needed. Superb defensive play again. They're playing one free, which means man to man, and the free safety has to read the quarterback. Watch, you're going to see the free safety work over the top of this. They're playing man to man outside of it. Look at right here. Good job. Up, under, and over. I'll tell you what, Cutler made a really good That's throw a out of that. Fantastic throw. You talk about a high degree of difficulty. Hey, that, that was That's tough. what it is. That's a high, you know, it's a. On third and 15, that's what you give up. Middle should come out with very good field position. Robinson at his 45. Ooh, he's got some wheels now, Robinson. And Vandy's special teams work led by Jonathan Goff. And so with 527 left, middle with great field position there at midfield, what Andy McCullum's got to be telling his offense is, guys, we need about three rushing right. first downs to win the ball right. game. Because if we can get it down, we got it. I, I believe, I still believe, if they give Vanderbilt the ball back within three, two minutes, with two minutes on the clock, Vanderbilt will win this football game. Wow. I'll call it out. Gross ran into Moses in the Red Sea didn't part. Moses Osefaji right there in the hole. Hey, they're playing run. They know that what, what MTSU has to be trying to think. They're going to run the ball, run the clock. I'm going to tell you right now, don't play too conservative. One of those seniors, there's about 10 or 12 of them. They've made up their mind. They want to be a winning football team. And you look here, MTSU has changed their offense. Two tight ends and a fullback. A long nine and Gross to the outside. And Gross falls down at the Vandy 48. Well, Patty he was looking to cut back there, and I thought he had some room on the outside. Yeah, I mean, I, I I, I don't agree with this. I've agreed with the coaching staffs all night. I say you keep running your offense. Right now they've gone to two tight ends and a fullback. And right here he tries to take this one out the back door. Nice job by Herdley Harrison. And for about the 20th time tonight, all of these 40,000 wow. are on their feet. Middle needs about seven. Vanderbilt needs a stop with right at four minutes to play. Marks rolls. Now he'll run. Marks gets his first down oh. to the Vandy 38. Hey, that, uh, I'm telling you right now, that's a gutsy, gutsy move by the junior lefty. I'll tell you right now, he, he had no intention of throwing that football. You saw that in his, in his, just in his actions. Watch here. He's trying to show that he's going to roll out and maybe throw to the flat with the fullback. He says, uh-uh, I'll just go. I'm going to tuck it. He has, look at it. He's not even in a throwing position. And then he just wills his way to a first down. Vanderbilt still has three timeouts remaining, and those are about to come into play pretty shortly. MTSU will milk the play clock and get it as deep as they can. They run Gross, and Gross tackled right at the line of scrimmage and okay. Vanderbilt steps in and uses one of their three timeouts with 324 to play right and it's got to happen here you would think to give yourself enough time if you're going to burn your timeout you got to get the stop right. here and even so middle has done their job even by getting that first down because of the clutch run by right. marks because now you can really push him back and, and make him right. go the length of the field pin it you got you got a chance to pin him deep but right now 
if you can't be thinking about that, if you're middle, you're not thinking about, oh, well, you got a chance to pin them deep. You're thinking about getting another first down. That's what I'm saying. Hey, guys, get it. And once again, Middle Tennessee, the perfect road game. They, they win the battle of the turnovers to this point. They created the one big turnover to get himself a cheap score, even though they have been out gained and out is out uh, clocked as far as the time of possession. Right. They've kind of been the Ali Roper dope just hanging in there right. and making the big plays when they need it. And for Andy McCullum, how big would this win be if he gets it? Well, uh, it just puts your pro, I, you know, it goes back to what I said. It puts your program back online. But more importantly, Andy McCollum's a good football coach. I keep saying it. Guys don't forget how to coach. I mean, I may have, but he definitely has. One year, it doesn't change like no, that. No, I'm well aware of that. But the fact of the matter is, in college athletics, it's all W's and L's. And this is a win he desperately needs. Right. And and you know what? He, he's got his team battling out there. And if they can pull this off, it's, it's kind of a, an emotional boost for the rest of the season. Hey, and you just go fight week to week. Hey, the effort on both sides has been Fantastic. there tonight. Fantastic. I'll, I'll say it one more time. I'd like to see this continue. Second down and 10 as we resume play. Marks, kind of a safety first quarterback draw. And, they got and a, a late flag Ooh. comes in after the three yard gain. And it's, it's a big hold too, because it's gonna take him pretty far back here. But you know, if you're Vanderbilt, do you decline this penalty? Yeah, I was, I was thinking that, Pat because it brings up a third, as it stands now, third and seven, or do you want second and 20? That's a heck of a decision to have to make. Right, he's going to decline he's gonna, this. He's going to decline he's, and put this, it on his defense to get a stop I on third I think this down. is a good call. I think this is a good call. They're still out of, I think they're just barely out of field. Holding range. number 79 on the offense. That penalty is declined, third down. Well, this is one of those where Bobby Johnson says to his defense, you're good enough to get it done. Prove me right. Right. This is one that fans will be talking about one way or the other as they leave the stadium tonight. MTSU went quarterback draw not only on this last play, but Marks ran for the first down about a minute ago. Look for Booker, the defensive end coming here. Uh-oh. Marks falls on the football. Ooh. And so Vanderbilt now is guaranteed they're going to get the football back one last time to try to win it. And they have called their second timeout. He just drops the snap, I think, here. Let's see. Yeah, they're trying to run the speed sweep. I think they were setting up for the speed sweep right there. Watch. Watch the receiver. And he's just late. To, see, he's getting ready to take that handoff, number 13. And you know what? Teron Henry was early getting there. I, I didn't think right. Marks was even going to be able to deliver the handoff had he fielded the snap. Marks clean. was trying to manage the clock, and Teron Henry was coming early in motion. So the assumption is that when Vanderbilt gets the football back, they're likely to have about 240 and one timeout remaining. Now, what Colby Smith, MTSU's punter, would like to do is drop this thing dead inside the 20 and he has been hot as the punter tonight he has been hanging him high and he has uh, put a couple inside the 20 but you're right it, what would be the huge play was to get him inside the 10 and remember all Vanderbilt needs is to get into field goal range and their kicker uh, Henfeld has done a great job all night he's made he's made good kicks tonight he's made some big kicks leading up to this he hasn't been perfect but I think they feel confident and I, I can think back to five or ten Vanderbilt games that have come down to this situation over the last five or ten years where either you had no confidence in the kicker to make the kick and you just really didn't ever feel like they were going to get over the hump. This team right now, based on what they've done this year, feels like they're in pretty good shape if they can execute. But I'll tell you what, middle has been so tough tonight. A disappointed Clint Marks. He'd love to have been able to run that play and see what would have happened. Smith Hangs it up there, and Bennett lets it drop, and it does. That's a touchback. That's a touchback. That, placing it at the one. Oh, my gosh. The officials mark it dead at the one. Well, if he has contact, though, if he has contact with the end zone, that ball's supposed to be a touchback. It was hard to tell from our angle. Let's, have, let's, let's take another look. Here. Let's see. First of all, great play by Santiel. That is a great play. Yeah, you know what? That's close. That, now, take it upstairs. 
I'd take that one upstairs for sure. Now, if your body touches the end zone and you're touching the ball, are you okay? No, it's a well, touchback. Well, let me say this. On, on the pro level, Pat, you're absolutely right. The rules on the college level are quite a bit more liberal on that. I think, I, I think uh, this hey, is, again, another reason to use Bob, instant replay. Bobby Johnson's saying it, too. So if you're Jay Cutler, you're about as far away from where you need to be as you can possibly be. Out of the shadow of his goal post, he'll throw. Yeah. In trouble. And he fires to do Dunning, that? who made an amazing play to get out to the eight. That was Houdini. That's what I'm talking. What did I tell you guys? I told you this guy is, is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And here's an example of it. Watch the composure. He's getting pressure from the outside. Scandrick can't get him. Hey, no problem. I'll just throw it in here. And they're all over Dustin Dunning. But he has been making catches like that all year long. He used his body as a shield to get those seven yards. Cutler again to the air. That's a strike. And a first down, Eric Davis to the 24. Now look, the clock will stop to move the chains. Look, just look at look at Cutler. Look, so composed, so calm, no big deal. I love it. Davis's sixth reception, and it gets him into Vanderbilt's top 10 receivers all time. A little more than two minutes to play. Cutler finds Bennett. Bennett heads to the sideline and goes out of bounds at the 29. Smart play by the young freshman. And Cutler again sells his guys, gives him the signal. Let's huddle up. Come on, guys. Willie, I'm really impressed. This kid showed some smarts on this thing to preserve what time he's got. Well, that's the play that they ran against Wake Forest on the final drive where he, he bounced back outside like that and got 28 yards. Yeah. That time, Middle did a good job. That's tendencies. That's reading tendencies on the film. You call you called it with that kid. He's, he's, he's electrifying. He's a good player. I like him a lot. Second and five for Vanderbilt. Remember, they started this thing at about the one-inch line. Cutler under some heat, and he throws it away. He got sandwiched. It looked like Scandrett and maybe Staten just came in with a Blue Raider sandwich. And Jay Cutler is lucky because that is the read. They overloaded to the left-hand side here, Pat. They get the rush going, and they played the short route. And sitting in up, up, up on that short route was Keon Raymond. He almost had the game-winning interception for the touchdown. Remember, you're in two-down territory here, and Vanderbilt does have one timeout left. Cutler out of the gun with time and a strike for a first down to Eric Davis. They move it to the 38, clock and the stops. clock will stop with right. that 150 to play. Now, if we get a chance to see this route, Eric Davis was in the slot. They played way off of him. The only guy near him is the linebacker in the middle of the field, and that's Jonathan Bonner. Watch this, but Cutler looks at him all the way. He sees the matchup he's got. Nobody on Eric Davis, your money man. I'll take a receiver against a linebacker nine out of ten times. Cutler to the air, Bennett again, and this time he gets seven before Dennis Burke gets him down. Now Vanderbilt's got to get moving because the clock will continue to run. Down to a minute 30, Vanderbilt trying to keep their undefeated perfect mark. And MTSU trying to say we'll make it three in a row. Cutler. Down the middle, Dunning. First down, Vandy to the MTSU 44. Dunning, a big help to Cutler here. I told you all, if, if he gets the football, he's going down. He, there's no doubt this kid is, hey, I, I've said enough. Ride the horse. They are about 20 yards away from realistic Hanfelt territory. And a basketball-style timeout, the last one for middle. Middle wants to give their defense a rest. They're a little gassed. Right, and, and they've been trying to substitute, and they haven't been able to. Okay, let's talk about this for a second, because I, I like the timeout that Andy's taken. He didn't like I the, do too. kind of the mood of it, the, the momentum swinging here. Do you just, do you play back? Do you pressure Cutler? What do you try to do with him? Well, you you better try to get some pressure on him, because you got about 10 more yards, and Hunfeld's going to pop it through the uprights. So you got to get some heat on them. You can't give up those five and six yard passes now because everything from here is going to be gravy. And as far as clock management right here, 
Vanderbilt is in okay shape because with the clock stopping on the first downs, with that timeout, you want to save that timeout in case you get in kind of a fire drill situation at the end of the at the end of the game. You don't want to have to scramble to get your field goal unit on the field. So as long as you're getting the 10 yards time right now, you, you don't have to over rush. Right. No, you got plenty of time on the clock. Want to thank the folks at the uh, Millennium Maxwell House who have taken care of our crew this weekend. And our crew is taking care of us with a game that uh, is not going to be forgotten for a long time. As play resumes, Vanderbilt from the MTSU 44. Andy McCullum trying to will his defense to one last stop to go home with the win. He's checking protection right here. Play clock down to two. Cutler to the air. Cutler left side, and that is way, way over Marlon White. And flags both in the middle of the field and in the corner. Is this defensive holding? You wonder. Earl Bennett was pushing. He thought he was held on the near side of the field. Of course, that was the opposite side that Cutler threw. Or is it? But everybody coming back to the line of scrimmage. Here's the patient. 12 men on the field on the defense. 15 yards from the previous 15 five. yards. Wow. Well, that, Where does that come hey, from? 12 players. Last time I checked, if I could play with 12 and you play with 11, I should have a chance to stop you. Andy McCullum. Can't be happy with that. These are where your groupings and your packages will have to be dead on perfect, and they were not. That is a big one. So now from here, Han felt if Vanderbilt moved not another inch, it would be 46 yards for Han felt, but obviously they want more here. And that's well within his range. Cutler has taken Vanderbilt from the inch yard line. Cutler. For Bennett, just out of the reach, and stride for stride was Bradley Robinson. And that's good coverage by Robinson as he works the edge. Watch this. It's the old cutoff. You know your stride for stride. If you're ahead of him, you have every right to continue running. If you're beside him, you cannot. And right there, he cuts him off to start. But a nice job by Bennett. Watch Bennett bend in to kind of give himself a little room to the sideline. You see that? Tell you what, that's a good throw. Pretty good throw, and if it were just, I mean, he had him beat by a step. That's about as good a coverage as you can have with no help from the safety but at all. It's an exceptional route there by Bennett as he bends the defender inside to give himself some sideline room. Don't be surprised if they come back to it again. Cutler may tuck it and run, and he got about four as Sean Mosley rode his legs for about a two-yard piggyback. And now the clock continues to run, and we're down to 50 seconds. And this is a clutch tackle by Mosley, because if he doesn't get him, there is all kinds of green in the middle of the field, and Cutler's not an easy guy to bring down. Clock's still running. Vanderbilt has the one timeout left. Willie, I'm impressed with Vanderbilt's poise here. They have had two comebacks at Wake and at Arkansas, and you can see it paying some dividends here. They got one on one, one on one coverage down here. Third and six. Cutler to the air. To the sideline. Dunning. And depending on the mark, it's a first down. It's very close. And the clock stops with 13 seconds. I think about four seconds extra went off that clock right there. And now the question is, do you run any more plays? Well, you got a timeout. You got a timeout, so you have time to run a play. Now remember, when they reset, the clock will start to run again here, like right here. Now they, they have to call the they have to call the timeout now. They have to call the timeout now. And Cutler will get under center in a hurry, and they're going to spike the football, and they do it with three seconds left. And now it will be on the young freshman, Bryant Hunfeld for about a 36-yard field goal, one of the most important kicks in recent Vanderbilt football history. Now, that was not what Vanderbilt wanted to do there, though, Pat. They wanted to get on the ball right. and spike it, maybe have a chance to take one shot yeah. at the end zone, but here it is. They drove from their inch yard line. Han felt for the oh victory. My it's, blocked. it's blocked. Middle picks it up. 
and MTSU wins at the buzzer. That is unbelievable. That's unbelievable right there. I thought they I thought they should have taken the time out. You know, they really looked like they rushed the snap and got it back there. I I just thought they were going to take the time out. Wow. Keon Raymond was the man who picked up the football. Let's see who got the paw on it. It looks like number 30, number 30, Weaver, who's had a great game from the safety spot, and now comes up with a big block. Great call, great defensive play. Wow. Watch Weaver, he comes right off the right side, inside of the, of the wingman, and just gets through there and blocks it. What an unbelievable ending Whoa. to a great football game. Wow. Andy McCullum, that is total jubilation Congratulations. on that sideline, absolutely. And it's shock on the Vanderbilt sideline right now. How good does Andy McCullum feel well, about that game? Well, how, how great of a football game. And what, what more could we, uh, you know, the Vanderbilt fans are going to go home disappointed, but as a fan of, a, of just a game of football, I couldn't ask for anything more. It was a great battle on both sides, big plays. Uh, you know, Cutler showed how good he is. You know, this team, relentless. I mean, this is a great football game. I can't, I can't thank them enough for letting me be a part of it. Tell you what, Pat, I did think that they rushed it yeah. a little bit. It's easy to go back and say it because sometimes it's almost better not to let your guy even think about it, but it did look a little bit, it did look a little bit like they were moving quick. Yeah. Now we're going to give you the call of the game brought to you by Mac of Nashville. Call the pros at Mac of Nashville for legendary mobile service, trained technicians, fully equipped service trucks. Mac does it right. Jeremiah Weaver for MTSU saved the Blue Raiders bacon, so to speak. He comes in, blocks the field goal attempt from Brian Honfelt, and secures the 17-15 victory for uh, MTSU. And no chance uh, no, for Honfeld I, at no, all. No I agree. Chance. I agree with you. I mean, we talked. We just said it a second ago. They line up for the field goal. I think they almost. Did you not think that they rushed that snap? Well, I don't know if they rushed the snap, but. Uh, there's no question that Weaver came in clean. They, they loaded up on the one side, and that was sometimes a kick gets blocked, and you think, okay, he didn't get it up very high, but that one was almost taken right off his foot. Wow, that was that was just that was just a, a great play by Weaver, and and really a nice design play. The outside guy takes the wingman just far enough outside, and in comes Weaver. Guys, this is one of the best most interesting exciting had everything in it football games we've ever had a chance to do great defense a great quarterback great coaching i mean this has been this has been a thrill well you see the razor's edge between winning and losing in a lot of college football games middle tennessee coming out of that north texas game was just killing themselves because they felt like they gave the game away they made too many mistakes tonight vanderbilt will look back and, and look at a few things not that they played poorly i thought vanderbilt played a pretty good game but they just made a couple more mistakes than mtsu did and even though vanderbilt outgained the raiders the raiders played an unbelievable road game to give themselves a chance to win and they pull it out willie when vanderbilt starts at their inch line if you know they're going to get off a 36 yard field goal attempt you got to look at cutler and the offense and say hey job well done well how about how about the houdini you called it best out of the back of his end zone he's going to be sacked for a safety and he gets the ball to his reliable tight end Dunning and that starts the drive and they work their way methodically down the field getting first downs working it back and forth unbelievable unbelievable let's go downstairs Amy Fadul standing by I have no idea where she is but Amy take it away all right I am standing here with Clint Marks the winning quarterback Clint talk about that last play and how how good it felt to be on that sideline oh it was real nerve-wracking you know uh, they drove it down did a heck of a job going from the one yard line but you know it's not over until the fat lady sings and uh, if, as long as you believe and have faith anything can happen how much does this turn your season around I think it's gonna turn around a lot you know this is a big game for us uh, we didn't start the season off the way we wanted to but uh, as long as we play like we did tonight 
I think we can turn around and end up with a good season. You guys were huge underdogs, about 17 points. What does this say, this win, what does it say about Middle Tennessee? It, it says that, uh, you know, we don't give up. You know, 0-3, uh, you know, they're 4-0. But we believe, you know, always the underdog, we'll always be the underdog. But as long as you believe and, and, and come together like we did, anything can happen. All right, Clint, congratulations. That'll do it from down on the field. We'll take a break and we'll be right back here. Amy, great job. Thank you for the work on the sidelines. Welcome to Nashville. You cheer every play, every first down, every end zone celebration. You bust your tonsils play after play and scream and shout like you've got a 260 pound linebacker on your tail. Then throw down a cold as ice Coke and get right back at it. Why? Because you can. Because you have to. Coca-Cola Football Town USA. It's homecoming for the Blue Raiders as they host Louisiana Lafayette. Come out early for the homecoming parade at 11. Enjoy the Blue Raider experience with live music and activities for the kids. First 5,000 fans through the gate will receive the free Blue Raider sports bracelet. Come see what Blue can do for you. Tickets on sale now at one yes mtsu it's the final days of Chrysler Employee Pricing Plus. Hurry in now for the best selection of remaining 05s. They're going fast, so get to your Chrysler dealer today for employee pricing plus cash allowance on Town & Country, PT Cruiser, and Crossfire Limited. All with our employee pricing plus a combined cash allowance of up to $3,000 on select models. Hurry in while supplies last. Don't miss out. Visit your Chrysler dealer today or visit Chrysler.com slash clearance. Southern Home Builders, traditional living with modern appeal. Well, an absolutely incredible football game tonight here at Vanderbilt Stadium. Amy Fadul standing by downstairs with perhaps the happiest man in Nashville. Right there. Well, they got a great kicker. We knew that. And he's, I've watched him in high school, and he's done hit some big ones on us before. And you know, if we didn't get pressure, he's going to make it. I know that. And, but our kids, I mean, they didn't give up, and that's um, that just uh, that's a mark of character. And I couldn't be more proud from where we've come from to, to beat opponent as good as uh, Vanderbilt this year. It's special. You talked early in the week how you're always the underdog. You don't pay attention to point spreads. What did it feel like knowing that that was the case again? Uh, it, it don't. We've lined up and played against the best in the country at Middle Tennessee. Uh, you know, people talk about losing seasons, uh, but they don't talk about what the, who these kids have had to play. And uh, they played some tough competition. They hung in there tough. They believed, they knew coming into this game that we had a chance to, to do things that we just executed. We got beat a couple of games by us not executing. And uh, defensively played well, Benton didn't break. Offense, when they had to have it, they put a drive on down there. I couldn't be more proud of it. We still got a long way to go. We still got a conference ahead of us. But it's going to be a lot better going to practice and, and getting the confidence that we got to have. All right, Coach, not as many mistakes it seemed like in this one. Congratulations to your team and good luck in the Sun Belt. Thanks a lot. All right, there was the coach, Andy McCullum, the victorious coach. They are now one and three. George, back to you. Okay, Amy, thank you. Two questions that come out of this. Number one, does this springboard MTSU to bigger and better things? And on Vanderbilt's side, how quickly can they get over the gut-wrenching feeling of a tough, tough loss you see the final play of the game that ultimately decided it MTSU congratulations to the Blue Raiders on their 17-15 victory for coach Pat Sperduto for Willie Donick and for our entire crew this is George Plaster thanks for watching an exclusive presentation of UPN 30.
Tonight's game has been presented by American Home Mortgage, Longhorn Steakhouse, Purity Zero Plus Milk, and 96.3 Jack FM. Weeknights at 6 on UPN 30. Hi, I'm Albert Hainsworth, Pro Defensive Tackle. When I travel in the offseason, the only car rental company I use is Access Car Rental. They have every size vehicle with the lowest rate. If you need something large, they've got it. Minivans, Explorers, Expeditions, and Excursions, all with DVD players. They also have 12 and 15 passenger vans at great low rates. With 36 convenient locations across Tennessee, Access Car Rental has a location near you. Get access. Call or visit the website to reserve your vehicle today. United together to save energy and money. A well-insulated attic is the key to cutting your energy bill. In the summer, the ceiling fan circulates the cool air and allows you to set your thermostat a little higher. Change the air filter of your central system monthly. Dirty filters decrease its efficiency. Installing a high-efficiency electric heat pump can save you big dollars, and your local electric power company can help you finance it. Middle Tennessee Electric and TVA, saving you money by using electricity efficiently. Better than watching the game is being there. And the great people at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep in Springfield will get you there in style. Fans from all over Middle Tennessee drive to Gupton for their own home field pricing advantage. Yes, wear your team colors proudly this season in a brand new Gupton Dodge Chrysler or Jeep. And whether you work hard, play hard, or work hard just to play, the Gupton team will always save you money. Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Go, go! Gupton, it's about you. Gupton treats you right. Gotta do something about this fence. Guess I better go get the tiny lassos. It's not the same old West at Longhorn Steakhouse. Try our Flo's Filet and Lobster Tail served with melted butter. Longhorn Steakhouse, there's a new West in town. Previously on Veronica Mars, Oh, my God. Mr. Eccles? I know what happened. <laughs> He's psychotic. These rich boys think they can get away with anything, don't they? What do you think you can do to me, huh? I'll think of something. My dad had a paternity test. I'm not your sister. <laughs> Keep trying. Veronica, where are the tapes? <laughs> I knew you'd oh, I knew you'd save me. <laughs> Table for three? Uh, right this mm -hmm. way. Uh -huh. <laughs> Normal. That's the watchword. Sounds good, doesn't it? Senior year begins tomorrow, and all appears hunky-dory. Best friend? Check. Boyfriend? Check. Lily's killer behind bars? Check. A waitress will be right with you. Normal job, just like other people my age. I just wish fewer of my classmates showed up here. Calvin Moore. One? Uh... I need your help, Veronica. In finding a table?